All right. Well, it says I'm live, and I see people in the chat. So let's kick this off. Okay. Uh, let's go with hello to Crimson Coburn Commander, if that's your real name. I remember back years ago when you were just a little Crimson Vader 007. How you guys doing tonight? Good to see you here. You are the first one here. <laughs> Son of Crayon Slayer. I, yeah, you were probably lurking in the shadows. You guys probably came at the same time. Yeah. Roma, hey, what's going on? Okay, so, hey, we got some guys in the chat. That's always a great way to start. I would have started if I was by myself anyways. But, uh, yeah, welcome to Fight Night. Here we go, guys. So, uh we will eventually get into the fights there. Uh, we are expecting to be joined by the rest of the uh, backyard battlefield uh, crew there. Aaron, the Toy Enhancer, and Three Star Draw are expected to join us at some point tonight if they can uh, work it out. Now, Aaron should be taking a shower right now, coming back from or on the drive back from uh, Kung Fu, not Kung Fu, Jiu Jitsu, right? He's, uh, he's out there making somebody top right now, so or at least he's already done that. And uh, three star, he's probably, uh, you know, getting all ready for his. Uh, well, he's at a probably work day for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, he's probably getting the arena all set up that he said he'd provide for us tonight. But uh, we've got we've got that packed up. If he if he's not able to get that, I know he's a busy guy, and he's got he's got a live tomorrow night, guys. If you're uh, if you're out and about tomorrow night, that's fine. But if you can get back in time, if you tune into Punk's uh, Thursday with a friend, our good buddy down south, 77, is the uh, the, the feature guest, right? So uh, uh, three-star draw. Uh, he'll probably talk about his uh, his uh, his uh, other stuff there with uh, his cousin there. Um, I keep forgetting it's Pop. Mm, <laughs> can't remember. The, the pop something. Uh, you guys know who I'm talking about anyways. His cousin there, they do Sevens Wild, uh, which is about Joe every other Wednesday. So I decided I'd sneak in this Wednesday, see if we can't uh, can't get ourselves to one last meeting there and talk maybe about some who would win in a fight between and you, right? So, uh, oh, geez, yeah, Jay Astro's here. That's great. And uh, I, I see Loki Wartooth in there. Now, Loki, you've had a... You, I know Gaslands Mechanic was telling me he had kind of an up-and-down week. You just had a bad day. A, a tornado ripped through your area. Is that right? Man, that sucks. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jay Astro says that too. That sucks, man. Hey, Turkish Murphy, how you doing? Um so let's see. We're, can't, yeah, can't stay too long. No power. Yeah, man. Uh, I just, I hope your wife's okay. I hope you're okay. You know, like, he's, you know, I'm not a religious man, but I, I'm familiar with the tale of Joe. <laughs> you know, man. Yeah, yeah, you seem to be going through some trials, my friend. You do, you're definitely doing. Hey, Riley, what's going on, brother? Uh, did you manage to get down to the Walmart there on uh, on on Cope Drive? Yeah, I know I was saying there was the one on Earl Grey, but the one on Cope Drive was the one that near me. That's the one that had the, uh, the Night Force on the shelf. I was there just today, I think, and I think I still saw them there. And I think if... Uh, if they're still there tomorrow, I might snipe that other wolf spider if it's uh, workable, but I don't know. I, I can't remember if that was on sale or not. If it's on sale, I'll snipe it. If it's regular price, Walmart price, I'm not going to bother. Uh, yeah, still happy and alive. Yeah, that's all right. But are the printer's okay, Loki. <laughs> Just kidding, buddy. Um, you know, like I said, uh, I, I, I lived in Alberta for quite a while, and we had a lot of tornado close calls in my region of Wainwright uh, back when I was doing a lot of teaching out there. Uh, I spent a lot of time just living in the... Living in the the wildlands of Wainwright and Tornado Alley, just, uh, just to the... Uh, Northwest of us there, uh, we spent a lot of time in the path. So I, I know the intensity of the situation. Uh, I just got lucky. But 87, my mom's husband there, my uh, my friend Dave, her, her husband Dave there, he he's, was at the, uh, the they call it uh, uh, Black Friday. 
So Tornado 87 in Edmonton, Alberta struck the city. Uh, the, the, the Canadian music group, the Royal Alberta Advantage, has a really good song called Tornado 87. That's all about that. Anyways, blah, blah, blah. I'm killing time. You guys want to see my new Rams? Uh, as you guys know. Actually, I'm going to wait for Aaron for that. Uh, but uh, I'll show you some new uh, tricks that I'm doing here. Uh but you're good on those figures, eh, Riley? That's good. Yeah, I'm full on Cobra. <laughs> Heard nothing of a weather attack, dominator attack. Yeah, yeah, it's um the weather dominator. I was thinking about that. Um, just as a kill a time a little bit. So you guys, um, I'll talk about that actually. The weather dominator uh, and the mass weapon and all watchdog. If you guys remember the Joe cartoon, there was quite a few nefarious things. So what you see me working on in the background, no, I'm not a, not doing paintings per se. I'm not Bob Ross, but these are going to be the backgrounds for my shelves. And I'm going to show you a, a couple that I'm doing. Uh, but uh, that background, it, they're all tied to places I know, uh, know about, been to, lived in, traveled to, things like that, that I tied into my end state world, right? Uh, which I told you. Uh, affects the U.S. and Canada alike. It was it's dystopian for both things. I showed you all a video a while ago. The, the pictures of Edmonton and Toronto as an artist would render them if if the the apocalypse ever happened, what they would look like after you know decades of wear, right? And it's the same thing. So I just thought it was fun to do up a shelf like that. But I uh, hang on, we're gonna get caught up. Hey, hey guys, uh, croak. Crimson Cobra Commander. Let's give him a back-to-back -back good night tonight. Uh, and last night, we were on Aaron's stream, and uh, a lot of you already went out and subscribed to him, and thank you very much for that. I know you appreciate it, and we appreciate it, because I consider I consider our friend Crimson Cobra Commander just a, a part of this whole murder family, right? So uh, you want to see a guy succeed. And uh, you guys were helping with that last night. But if there's anyone there uh, out there in the chat today that wasn't part of that last night, uh, Cobra Crim Crimson Commander used to be uh, Crimson Vader, I believe. Anyways, he's got his own channel. He's doing Joe reviews, and it looks like he's got an unboxing coming up. So if you guys want to go check him out, give him your support. Uh, and if you have feedback, some constructive feedback for him, just know he's looking for that, especially from the other content creators. And Shane Bryla, I know I've just been checking out your channel just recently, uh, as much as, as early as this afternoon while I was painting, and I enjoy that. Please, yeah, if you haven't checked him out, do so. Uh, so let's move up in the chat a little bit. Sorry. Uh, still waiting on your retro scarlet me too none of my retro except for condo has come uh happy little background yeah just a happy little background so you know i haven't painted any seagulls uh but i have painted clouds yeah people let's go hey woody right on introduce uh the assassin bug your karma for it's your it's your karma for the assassin bug mm. Not sure I understand the assassin bug quite yet. Uh, it'll probably come to me after. Riley, uh, I gotta pick up some food, but okay, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, we're here. Uh, I'm I'm waiting, like I said, for the other guys to show up before I show the Rams and before we do the fights. We can talk about the fights a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna probably show you some shelves that I had some fun with. Uh, well, at least the. Tiger Paw, Firefly. What? Tiger Paw looks good. Repay Firefly was lame. Oh, I'm probably jumping in. Oh, breaking news. The Tiger Paw was just announced. Yeah, okay. I'll have to check that out. Well, I might have to Google that and have a look at that tonight. Uh, so I've been playing around with uh, the, the, the fight arenas. Like I said there, guys, there's one uh, that we have as my main, like my ninja fights. But that was what you were seeing on the... Uh, the the channel description today i thought I, I was having fun setting that up but i know the picture didn't capture it all you had uh quick kick beating the daylights out of uh ripper who thinks he can just grab weapons and whatnot but yeah i know he's 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 losing that fight and then he looks and then you have the the croc i i'm glad i didn't put it into focus because i want to blood and gore but yeah the animals are tearing the croc apart but just a little fun we had today getting ready for the show thinking about fights uh, so what do we got in here? Uh, Loki, you're the one who sent the bug after Aaron. Oh, right. That's a good bug. 
Yeah, that. Uh, th- so last night, if you weren't wa- if you weren't watching, uh, Aaron Aaron had this bug buzzing around his garage while he was trying to shoot live, and this thing whacked him. <laughs> and I mean, we're talking about a guy who, who we just finished talking about, you know, choking guys out with their own ghee, and you know the the ups and downs of taking cauliflower here, and just an evening of talking about beating the crap out of people. But this bug kept getting the better of them, right? And you know, uh, when I was in Kosovo, nineteen ninety nine, two thousand, like most people were partying at the the New Year's of the century. I was at a checkpoint security, making people pull over and we'd search them for guns in their cars all night. It was a good time. But they had stag beetles there. And if you don't know what a stag beetle is, it's those ones that you often see behind glass in the museums and displays with the huge goddamn pincers or the big ass horn. Like those kind of beetles were flying around um the the Yugoslavian area. Like we were in Kosovo, right on the border of Serbia. And these thing one of these things hit my buddy's helmet while we were driving and her bison and we were only doing like 30 and that thing knocked him on his ass and it hit the helmet but it was just for a second he thought he got shot right so uh let's get caught up in the you want to see hard master versus uh soft master yeah <laughs> no matter what who wins should be a firm master Oh, hard master, soft master, man, master. We'll get there, master. Maybe take a pillow, master. <laughs> uh, big bull versus Sergeant Slaughter. Okay, I think uh, I think the boys down south, uh, they got big bull. You know, you know, I don't. I got Slaughter, but I don't got big bull. Yeah, they always get the asses beat, right? Like, come on. We're essentially talking about an Australian bike gang from Mad Max, right? Like uh, the, the Posers. Um, but I mean, yeah, okay. They some of them look tough, but their numbers are weak and their gimmick is weak. But in cartoon world, it is the coolest shit, right? Like if you want to talk about a creator unlock that just says, "Man, I don't care what you come up with. I don't care if it's wacky. Uh, can you rat rod that shit and just slap it together, scratch build it?" Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me introduce you to the Dreadnoughts, right? Um, Rhino Beetles are massive. Yeah. Mr. T. Mr. T versus Alley Vipers. Man, I need a Mr. T head. Yeah. But uh, it's just not on my list of the characters. I've got some characters that Loki sent me that I've been sitting on, uh, giving them little code names like Whiskey Tango, um, just as project names to remind myself how bad I want to do them. Uh, but it's finding the right bodies, right? But yeah, Mr. T is another one because you want like a Wolverine body. You want him cut as crap, bling, 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 mohawk, and then five foot two, right? Uh, yeah, so about the lore, right? And the end state kind of idea was that, uh, right? Um, sorry. Like I, you guys remember the subscriber shelves. The whole idea was like, what if all this time Joe just made the biggest, stupidest mistake with Cobra, right? Like, yeah, okay, we stopped them from using the mass device. We stopped them from using a weather machine. We stopped them from doing this. We stopped them from doing that. It's always a prototype machine. It's always like one of a kind. And they always blow it up or capture it or whatever, right? Like every other cartoon does. And somehow the bad guy gets away. And we never see that thing again, you know, now in modern series, we'll see that thing again. But back in the 80s, you'd never see that thing again, right? That massive device or the weather dominator or whatever. Never see it again, right? But is that really, is Joe doing their job following up on that? Like, okay, they got away. Was there blueprints? Did anyone know if, like, they had another copy of the file. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> you know, like so. The end state is basically that kind of blowing up at the face. All these forgotten devices all going off at once, right? Uh eight alley vipers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh yeah. So we got twelve in the chat. Uh I can't see the likes right now, and I don't see Aaron, and I'm going. So the way this is going to work tonight, guys, and you're going to hear me recap it when down south and uh, Aaron show up. It, uh, I'm going to actually turn on the towel to see if I can see what's going on there, if they've got a message for me or anything. Um, the way we'll do it is I'll, I'll 
Hang on, I'm gonna see if they sent a message and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, nope, nope, and nope. All right, yeah, so I figure we're gonna name one that we wanna see, meaning one contestant, and uh, you guys will name one or we'll just let the other guys have weigh in on how they wanna do it, but uh, I, I, I think we can have some fun with this because the way I wanna do it is, you know, we would do it like my old spec fire say okay at uh you know 300 meters there who's got the edge why okay there you go 200 meters in well who's got the edge why okay close combat who's got the edge why who's got a lore that buffs them okay all right this is what it looks like uh do you guys agree disagree move on right and just have some fun explaining our positions on that because i know aaron's a big cobra guy i'm down the middle uh Skeletor got away. He knew where they lived. Right? There you go. And it's the same as Gargamel in a magic mushroom village. Come on. Right? Pick that shit up. <laughs> um, I like that the Tiger Paw wreckage with a steel core helmet. Oh, they made wreckage? Oh, man. Okay, so you guys know that's one of the end state characters I made was wreck uh, wreckage. So now I really have to... I gotta see this. I gotta see if this is on Google now. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just got a message from down south. He says, uh, he says, screw you, crow, you belligerent bastard. Those guys are not ready for the awesome stage I have. You're on your own. No, I'm just kidding. He, he told me he's on his way, guys. He's just getting set, things set up. So I'm going to go the old Googletronics here, capture some internets, interwebs, my hat, put them into the device. Type in Tiger Paw classified and see a Crimson Vader, Crimson Co Cobra Commander has done me the news tip of the day. Classified. Well, we all knew it was coming once the uh, the ferret was there, right? So, looky, 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 looky. Yep, there it is, guys. Right there, first first image you pop up. Oh boy. And that's a much better wreckage than the one I did. Where's mine? I want to see this up close. Oh, that's cool. So they gave him a face. I'm just having a look at it. So they it looks like they've given him a face, like a rider's mask. Um, like kind of like mutts, but I can't tell if that's molded onto his face. It probably isn't, eh? It probably isn't. Um, but it's definitely strange that they're presenting it with that. Makes you wonder if he's got like a goatee or like a hideous scar under there. Cause he is basically Firefly, right? Um, when I did my wreckage, uh, when I find him in this hellhole of organization, uh, I did mine with the idea that. Like I did the research, he was saber tooth uh, designed. Yeah, there, there. Sorry, guys, if you can't hear me, that's sloppy of me. He's designed to be. He was designed after the character saber tooth. Now, at the time when I read that, that's not the right box. Uh, I thought they meant like the X Men character saber tooth, uh, because I could see that their rendition showed very much that. Oh, it was he over here somewhere. But, Jesus, guys, I did not expect to be talking about him today, which is why you're seeing me scramble to dig him out right now. And I apologize. But that that blew my mind. Okay. Uh, yeah. Nonetheless, uh, when I find my wreckage, he'll be, he'll be here. Is he in this one? It might be in this one. I haven't set my shelves up because I had redone everything, right? Uh, and I was doing that. So uh, interesting. Yeah, I like that. So I want to ask. But so I'm going to get caught up in the chats for a second. Uh, Turkish Murphy, Woody, uh, hey. Okay, everybody's saying hi. Yeah, Viper Island must have dropped that one. I wasn't really watching uh, a lot of... Uh, fresh drops today like i said i spent most of my day getting caught up on a couple of videos by uh, i watched crimson cobra commander 
uh which one was it that i was watching oh the transformers video i remember watching that and i was watching um some of uh shane's videos on his channel there God. shane can you please drop the name of your channel on there because i only just recently figured out what it was uh, i've been spelling it and putting it wrong and sometimes these things are cap sensitive i just dropped a piece of kit as i always do that is the crow way uh i am just still looking for my wreckage but it's not it's not a big deal um if i don't find oh there he is right here right in front of me uh, right in, right in my teeth no there was mine uh so they did theirs very differently and i'm glad they did because then that's why i don't like sometimes predicting which ones i want to do a repaint of or or try and get done right so that's cool. I really like that. I kind of want to know what's going on behind the mask. I actually, the, yeah, I'm happy getting this instead of a ferret, quite honestly. I know Hush has been asking me, hey, do you want the ferret? And I was kind of like, maybe, maybe. But the tiger paw, yeah, I like it better. So that was theirs. This is mine. Many, many differences. That makes mine livable for my end state shelf. Not necessarily for my Tiger Force shelf, but I still had that big brawler I did. And there's another image of, on, of him on the Tiger Paw. I wish I was more talented and had <laughs> the ability. I'm trying to get my Chromebook set up. I used to have a Chromebook set up, and I'm wondering if, uh, if I get that set up again, could I uh, conceivably do better with this? Okay, so we got a bigger, better picture. Oh, shit, right there. There's another picture of wreckage, right? So, yeah, essentially, I am seeing exactly what was already said. It's basically a Firefly kind of character, which he is. And it's not, uh, it's a Bell Clava he's wearing. So, yeah, he's just got a really cool kind of camo over his mouth and that's what we were seeing i thought maybe he had a shaved head because it's such a pale brown no nope. he's wearing a, a balclava firefly head yeah cesspool and bane from the dark knight rises yeah and that's what i was seeing back with the original character it was very much that way okay i'm missing a ton of chat i'm just gonna quickly jump over uh Oh, Allison. Hi, how you doing? Popping in, editing some stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, Allison, I just wanted you to know I've been listening to Punk talking about um, the the uh, Power of the Force challenge. And if I do stumble across a Power of Force in what few stores I go over here, I'm definitely uh, willing to pick one up and do a review on it. I just, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to Punk if and when that happens. I just, I've been watching like a couple of stores and I haven't seen them yet, but very interesting challenge. I really like that challenge. It's very creative. Good on you guys for doing it. And I, I hope there's still room for people to participate by then, but uh, we'll see how I do. All right. Uh, same time toys. That was it. Uh, so yeah, I'll stop calling you by your name. It's the same time toys. Thank you. Uh, I knew if I just scrolled, I would get caught up. Okay, guys. Yeah. So thank you very much for keeping the chat going amongst yourselves while I rambled on. I'm just going to get down to the bottom here. DMAC. All right. DMACism. Don't see him here often, but I do see him in the comments and I have since the very beginning. So I always appreciate when DMAC shows up. Hmm. No, Allison, exactly that. Um, G.I. Joe is just one of those things I, I get serious and comical and passionate about just because of the childhood and, and the uh, and the uh, the military experience, right? Like, you do it for your life. <laughs> G.I. Joe helped. Um, but Star Wars had equal impact as a child. I remember where I was. I was in the backseat of a rabbit interfering on my uncle's date uh you know back in when the at uh, 77 uh and the movie playing with star wars was the towering inferno it burned into my mind that whole night because star wars changed my life so the opportunity to participate in a fun and creative kind of thing that has anything to do with star wars just once absolutely that's yeah, that's a must do it, it sounds like a lot of fun it sounds like a blast uh but again if it if it gets too full don't worry about it <laughs> uh Shane, it's mutton junk here. That's what I got. 
DMAC, what you miss? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, we are just waiting on Aaron, the Toy Enhancer, and Down South. Those guys are joining us here in, uh, in a bit. Uh, Aaron's just getting back from jujitsu and down south message me saying he was uh, getting set up. So, and then I'm going to show the Rams that I got from Aaron the Toy Enhancer when I asked him uh, for that um, that Duke because he had so many Dukes. And, uh, you know, I didn't feel good asking, but it was, he was already sending me something. I was like, well, if you're going to send it, can I get off one of your Dukes off? Yeah, I'll hit you back or something. And, uh, yeah, he sent like a bunch of dukes and leftover ram pieces. We call it Chevy shrapnel in my mind, right? Because uh, down south sent him a, a beautiful Chevy that Aaron just fell in love with because he's drive Chevys and uh, it's his work truck and he turned it into an amazing thing, right? So, uh, yeah. Where, uh, sorry, Loki must have said something here. Uh, Anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, the shelves. Uh, I wanted to show you that checkpoint where I left it today. If you guys caught the earlier, see, I've even got my ring on back up in case, in case down south can't get his awesome cage arena bloodbath going uh, or falls behind. But yeah, that, I'm going to turn that into just a, a Cobra checkpoint, but I'm going to have lights kind of going in behind everything. Uh, so it kind of just is luminous. And I want to have the layers of a, a city ruin, kind of paint it up. But I want to kind of have a, I want to try and do up like the silhouette of a terror dome back there, a Cobra terror dome. That was today's little fun in my garage while I sat there and, you know, had my medicine and smoked my meds and uh, and finished up a few things. And like I said, one thing is the subscriber wall, uh, guys, if I haven't gotten you on here and uh, you haven't seen yourself, please ask and I will definitely make sure I throw you on there. I apologize. It's hard sometimes to remember everything off the top of your head, right? But uh, yeah, I'm working on a few different sets here and I'm trying not to show you the Rams just yet. So we've got the the wilderness, the jungle, we're going to have a, a harbor, all that sort of stuff. But that was one of the backdrops I'm working on is a place called Wolf Island, which is uh, the largest island of the Thousand Islands. You guys, has anyone ever been to Wolf Island or is a aware of Wolf Island at all? Yeah, let's, let's ask you that. Uh, yeah, so Coral the Crimson Commander, what is that net? Are you talking about, sorry. Uh, well, I can answer both questions. So uh, both, both you might be referring to. This is chicken wire uh, that you pick up for gardening uh, and uh, just fencing off your bushes. Uh, I've had that sitting in my garage for about 10 years. <laughs> Finally, it was like, you know, I could use that as a big perimeter fence. And this is just from a hobby store, like a craft store. It's actually from the dollar store craft aisle. And that is a crocheting. It's a crochet mesh. I'm just seeing if I have any kicking around here. No, I left it upstairs probably in the garage. It's a crocheting mesh for like stitching pillows and covers and things like that. Because in deep down inside, I am a golden girl. Uh, I am actually the ghost of Blanche Devereaux in a in an old veteran's body. Uh, that shark thing could work for undertow. Yeah, yeah, undertow. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, and it brings me to a point. Uh, oh, you've been there, hey buddy? Yeah, Wolf Island. Yeah. I have an ex that had uh, a cottage on there, and uh, she lived. Uh, she her parents had some money, uh, but Wolf Island was a great place to go because it was just a matter of the cops uh, not catching the ferry. Hey, we're gonna get joined now, but there we go. And yeah, uh, let's see, Aaron. Uh, What's up, guys? Hey, hey buddy, uh, fix my sound. I have no sound. No, I can't hear. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So okay. we were just talking about some of the, the, I was t showing the guys some of the sets and we got on the topic of the, the aquatic stuff. And I was just going to talk about how um, really quickly while we waited for you. But uh, I remember it, them, Lenny and them saying that they are not as interested in doing uh, watercraft vehicles as much as they are doing air vehicles and land vehicles. In fact, we're not to expect them. So that was kind of where that conversation went when we were talking the other night. Uh, Aaron had challenged me to do a fang. And, uh, 
son of a bitch. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you stuck me with the devil fish, man. <laughs> well, and that was why. I was like, we're not going to get one, apparently. So we might as well make one, Aaron. Uh, That's and right. Make one, right. It's going to be the toy enhancer, and he's going to make people look stupid for not making it. So, yeah, it was all about that. What I'm good at. <laughs> So you're all done jujitsu, showered up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I'm in my rash guard, guys, but um it is what it is. I just walked through the door. I, I haven't even I couldn't chime into the episode or anything. Um I had enough time to make a cup of coffee and that was it. <laughs> yeah, brother. It's all good. And I mean, like I know I was kind of pestering in the chat a little bit last night, but I, I just was realizing like there was a there was a lot going on over the last few days, and I know down south particularly, he's got a big night tomorrow night with Punk, right? So I was just kind of like, hey, has the situation changed, guys? Because if it has, I was fine either way, but I would have come live anyways. But yeah, uh, so good day. Did you What's see that? the images of Wreckage and the Tiger Paw? I did not. I did not. What's up, Crimson Cobra Commander? I see your comment. <laughs> so Crimson Cobra Commander is actually the one who filled me in. And I mean, the others chimed in as well. Nice. Uh, you can Google that right now and it, it's there. It's the box image and we are getting wreckage into the Joe line as our next Tiger Force group. And wow. I'm very surprised, actually. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And I was showing them my wreckage conversion that I did. And I was saying like, you know, this is one of the things about doing conversions is why sometimes you see a guy not do a mirror image of what the character looked like, but come up with their own concept because mm -hmm. they know a figure is going to come down the line and they don't want to look at the two of them together and feel like theirs was competing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, another thing we talked about last night, Aaron, uh, just so you, this was it. This was my, uh, my stupid little punching bag that I made for oh. slaughter in my gym. That looks uh, awesome, man. No, it really didn't work out. I couldn't do do what you were doing with uh, the leather, like my bunching end. I should have. Oh, just, just it, so just put you a little glue on there and just glue it down on the yeah. end. But no, that's I like the sitting, stand. Uh, that's been sitting in the background for for a while and just not in the forefront. So yeah, I was laughing when. Uh, when you did yours, I was like, I should have waited. <laughs> I didn't even have a Man, picture. I love that stand. It looks very Oriental-like. That is awesome, man. Well, you know, it's the lazy Canadian lumberjack look, right? So It looks uh, Miyagi-like. <laughs> What's hey, up? Hey, What's up? up? Oh, there we go. Three stars. <laughs> uh, how you doing, bro? Uh, pretty good, man. Just trying to work out my own computer problems here. <laughs> don't we have them all sure. yay no. the backyard battlefield is together <laughs> <laughs> we here what's, what's our uh what's our chant is it jobra <laughs> yeah jobra <laughs> <laughs> what's up allison how you doing yeah. <clears throat> what's up y'all what's going on chat how's everybody doing <clears throat> Yeah, 3D printed water vehicles, eh, uh, Crimson Go Cobra Commander? If only I knew somebody that might tackle such a thing. Hmm. Right? Aaron, <laughs> if you knew the guy, we, we'd hmm. see it by now, right? I know right. a guy that knows a guy. <laughs> is, is Loki in the chat yet? <laughs> right. So Loki, he's, uh, he's in the chat, but he's limited tonight, gents, because the tornado kind of ripped through his area. Because oh. He's been rolling really well, like uh, zeros and ones the whole time. And mm. uh, that that's the luck for him tonight is that. But he mm. says, okay, the missus is okay, but his power is limited. Wow. That sucks. That sucks. Yeah, that we were supposed to, to get a bunch of those bad storms tonight, but they I think they missed us. Uh, they were talking it up quite a bit, but I think most of it missed us. Yeah, it's been raining all day here on and off. Yeah, we've been getting a bit. We got a bit last night. Seems we're getting the tail end of some of your old weather, or we were <laughs> getting just the outside of the, the front coming. Like, whatever hit uh, Tennessee there a couple of days ago, that's mm -hmm. right the north yeah. as well. Oh, my gosh. Look at all these acronyms Astros throwing at us. <laughs> Bro, you got the live stream yard all over your face there. <laughs> oh, is it all over my? Look at the. It layout. is now. Put, okay. put us it on the triple. 
Put us on the triple layout. <laughs> yeah, just, you, know, you can yeah, remove it. It's in uh, what's it in banners? You can remove. There's a way to remove it. Yeah, banners maybe. Yeah, yeah. that's one. Oh, geez, no, that makes... there you go. No. <laughs> it's no, it's I don't the like pro show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're hosting tonight. <laughs> Negative. Negative. Right. Ghost Rider patterns full. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's get rid of the banners. So. Uh, no, while I'm we good. do that, while I bring around with that, uh, really quick, I'm just gonna. Did I get the retro Scarlet? No, not yet. It's probably sitting there waiting for me at GameStop. And <laughs> you're watching. Uh, oh, there's banners. Mine and and Don's house might be here. What? What do you think? Friday? I'm hoping Friday. Friday or, Friday or Saturday? I think. I think. Pro, you know, they've gotten good with the shipping but i haven't gotten the the left the building notice for it yet i just got charged for it yeah so, sometimes i never get that notice though the left the building yeah i got it I'm once fine. uh and it showed up the next day mm. <laughs> so yeah i think probably saturday so i don't know i've got so much stuff that i'm that i need to open and if i review it try to do reviews on it but uh you know that stuff will have to go to the to the top priority even though at this point i don't even know if it's worth doing a review on those two honestly they've been out man they've been out yeah. but well, I, like I mean scarlet. it's all i gotta do the scarlet yeah. man. It, it's all it's all for fun so you know we've been, we've been waiting for that scarlet <laughs> oh yeah 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 and i mean oh I just don't next week much. crimson cobra commander crimson cobra commander is one that I just saw somewhere like um, a week ago, somebody had done a repaint of that. And I, I think it was an older one. And mm -hmm. I never even heard of it. And now it's all like I want it. Yeah. Yeah. So down well, south, you're going, you, you're, going on a, you now. you're going on Punk Show tomorrow night, yeah? Yeah, I'm supposed to be on a Thursday with a friend tomorrow. That's awesome, a buddy. One. I can't wait. I loved when I seen that posted. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah man yeah, that was um, awesome yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty excited for it and honestly i ain't gonna lie I'm, that one that one i'm a little nervous for so. I knew, that was my uh, next question are you nervous because even i yeah. was nervous oh, when, I, when you asked <laughs> a, a, a little bit yeah because it's not like doing this like it's talking about yeah. me and i don't i'm not a very extroverted person so hey. And you're going to get bombarded with gonna, questions. Yeah. So, uh, when he, when he asked me, I told him I wasn't sure if I was interesting enough for it, honestly. So what? get out uh, of town. Yeah, Everyone so knows. I, I'm a, <laughs> yeah. Woody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Call me, call me down South 77. That's, 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 that's the name. It's the, the channel is going to be three star draw, but three I'm still going to be down south 77. He was we saying he kind of wanted me to, he was wanting me to move like everything over to, to uh, down south 77. But I was like, that's, that's not a channel name. That's, that's a person name. Uh, you know, so whatever. Yeah. I'm excited for it, man, but I am a little bit nervous because I'm not. If I'm if I'm talking about me, it's usually like a funny drunk story or something. So I'm getting into the 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 old stuff and talking about stuff is it's gonna be different, but I'm ready for it. I'm I've been I'm excited for it. We all have drunk <laughs> stories. I was talking about some last night. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that. the thing, right? Like I've watched a few of these <laughs> now. Still on. <laughs> uh there, but and um you know you're you're in good hands like whatever whatever you can't think of talking about punk's been down this road before with other guests right and he knows how to ask the right questions to lead the discussion yeah. it'll go fine you're gonna be awesome man yeah i've watched most of those ever since i've been watching his show so yeah you me know, too, I man. Know how, how it's gonna go I, I like that i like that he really like that he does that and getting to know the, the people in the community so yeah, it, bring, um, it brings the hub together, man. I think it's yeah, it's it really like, does solidifies it. Yes. Yeah, and um, like I like Allison, everybody in the chat is emulating exactly what I've been saying too, right? Like, you guys will have the same kind of rapport that we, you know, even better because Punk's so talented at at the, the discussion, monitoring, and and leading yeah. it. 
taking it. You'll, you'll feel right at home like this. And Aaron, I think what, after probably five minutes, you felt at home once you got going, right? Absolutely. I was nervous as shit coming on there. And I mean, we all, we all get nervous coming on here. Um, I remember my first few episodes, I had Missy with me just to like, God, just, just so I had some kind of wingman, you know, and um, man, was I nervous, but now it's just like, you know, talking on the phone or, or whatever, you know, it just, it becomes natural and I don't care if some goofy ass shit comes out of my mouth once in a while. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and I'm so, more worried about like incriminating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do yeah. the incriminating stuff. <laughs> right? like, that That's another reason why I think like guys like you and Aaron can relax when you're doing those shows um, is because you're you're actually genuinely who you are i've talked to each of you offline separately uh oh, yeah. in different forums like either on messenger or over the phone or on zoom and you're exactly who you appear to the rest of the people in the chat you don't you're not playing a character and there's some right, people right. i think that are playing a bit of a character and oh, and something definitely. like that would would definitely keep them on their footing because they'd be like wait a minute am i exposing something I didn't mean to expose about myself. I, I really couldn't keep up with all that being fake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'd forget who I told what bullshit to. So <laughs> I, I don't mean so much as fake as so much as uh, that demeanor. And I think you can think of a couple of guys I'm talking, right? So, oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, let's, uh, I'm going to get caught up in the chat here. And then, uh, Aaron, I, as I told the guys, uh, I'd go over and same with you down south, just an idea of fight night, but, uh, so did you get a stage set up? Because I, I know you had a really good one, eh? Uh, yeah, I mean, one. I've got it's it's not really set up, it's just kind of sitting here. It is kind of set up, but um yeah, I, I I can do it pretty easy. I will I will kill the cam for a minute though when I set it up, but I whenever we get ready for that, I've got a I got I got something good to, to kick that off with. So um uh I'm ready. Oh I love it. I love it. And I love that we were, at least you got some time to think about it rather than spring it on you. We talked about this last night. And I, not um, much. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I mean, um, not much at all. You're right. Uh, but Aaron, um, I think you, you've you been following my channel probably longer than, than most here. Um, you remember Specfire at all? Did you remember when I did those fights with the Joe? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we got asked to do, like, I, I had a conversation with somebody who's like, can you do that again? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, it's not going to be dragged out like this. So I thought, what what a better way than to have the three of us, because then you've got that uneven vote, right? Uh, vote in on it. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Before we did that, uh, just so that I can close out the loop on things, uh, and I'll I will get caught up in the chat, guys. Sorry if I'm missing some of the chat. I know the other two are reading what they can. I wanted to show Aaron yeah, the rounds. Exactly. Um, Aaron sent me a couple of rounds. I oh, said, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I finished them up there while I was taking the, the few days off, feeling shitty for myself. <laughs> uh, You've been and, sick? Uh, what's that? You've been sick, huh? Yeah, the eclipse. I'm allergic to eclipses, so it's good. <laughs> You gotta hold to some of that, some of that bad, <laughs> bad backy. Yeah, it's, it's my kryptonite powers. For some reason, eclipses just make me weak, like you guys. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I did a video a while ago talking about what kind of uh, ideas I had for these bikes there, um, and I talked about dispatch riders, which. Uh, just to quickly recap, if uh, sorry guys, if I'm ignoring the chat for a second, you're dead sexy, are you? Good for you, same time. Uh, sexy man, <laughs> sexy, sexy man, man. Sexy get man. in my belly. <laughs> yeah, uh, so dispatch and riders, sexy. <laughs> yeah, dispatch riders are the guys that, uh, if we ever did get a nuclear war, they'd be the guys delivering messages because the the comms wouldn't be dead, right? So, dirt bikers. That's what you need to know. So, yeah. so I'm just going to flip the camera around and just quickly go to solo layout if you're all right with that, guys. So they won't yeah, do it. it. Do it. Uh, nope, hey. that's you. <laughs> <laughs> look at that collection. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. See, they look just like down south's room. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, holy smokes! Get the wow, work, dude. dude. So they're my Cabela special. <laughs> Dang, that's but, awesome. Uh, but I've got the um. So I called them Ram Rats <laughs> because uh, <laughs> just cool. the Desert Rat Patrol. So we put the little rat decal on the uh, on the fenders on there. I don't oh, know. Man. Is that showing up? Can we see that? Yeah, just hold yeah. still for a second. <laughs> man, there. that looks awesome, bro. Okay. Yeah. And then good. the fun part was like, uh, you gave me those sidecars, mm -hmm. and and uh, I know exactly where the Gatlings are for them. So I was like, well, okay, well, what's the feature, right? Because every time you build something, right, you kind of you're thinking, I need a feature. So I was like, magnets. So I magnetized the weapons mounts. So I was gonna okay. say, is that a gun holster? Yeah, hey. that's a that's a weapons a scabbard, holster. Yeah. And all that is, is, you know, the little blades, your exacto blades come in, the little cases? Yeah. Uh, these done up with oh, uh, man. some fridge That's magnets awesome. cut down and then weathering. And then we magnetized that to the side using a little roll. Uh, some of my rolling papers come with magnets. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know. The and Randys then, and all that. Yeah. yeah. And then, why, uh, why do magnets come with rolling papers? Just to keep them closed so they don't. Yeah, the out. lid. To keep the lid closed. Yeah. Okay. And then the, so they, they each got like what this one's Joker and then this one belongs to Bomb Strike uh, because I'm doing a Bomb Strike. But this was um, if you look at some of the images on Google, like it's it's more than I know about dispatch riders, like some of the mm -hmm. casings and, and packs they carry. So I did. A, I'm sorry. I'm going to put that down. I did another magnetized piece of kit, but this uh, picture would be some of their serve and listening gear like computers in a yeah. hard pack. And then we just magnetized that. So it just uh, sticks onto the side. But yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. awesome, man. But that I just looks want great. to very much yeah. for the Rams, buddy. Because, uh, yeah, you're welcome, man. I didn't know you were going to deck them out like that, man. They look good. They look like they've been rolling through the desert and stuff, man. <laughs> well, that was just it. I was like, man, I, the, if yeah. anything was uh, going to scream, like any opportunity I have to do, like recce type vehicles, uh, because that was really the bread and butter for the longest time when I really liked my job. Yeah. Uh, as soon as those rams, and I was like, no Gatling guns. That makes them lighter, more maneuverable. So yeah. the um, the side cars, cars, I'm thinking I'm going to do a serve gear package for them rather than a weapon system. So, uh, all right. I'm going to get caught up in the chat. Thanks very much, everybody, for humoring me on that. Uh, Woody Triple Two said, nice work, Crow. Yeah, and we got Grievance. Thanks very much. Hey, Grievance, how you been, buddy? Uh, I owe you an apology. Sure. Like, I just haven't been... I haven't been finding a bunch of good figures to do those uh, Wolverines, like get caught up on those yet. So, but Turk hey. said, look good. And then um, Shane says, I'm dizzy. <laughs> yeah. Holler, holler at Woody. He got a bunch of shit in. He can spare some figures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, guys. Uh, I am good. You're, we're, we're good. I, I'm getting like, I don't know what to do anymore when I get a package. I just like freak out. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is this that needs my? <laughs> you know, I told I told Down South, don't don't dare you send me anything until I get you a package. <laughs> yeah, and I told you not to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, like I've got packages put aside for Aaron and Loki right now because yeah, Loki, I know he overdid the three D printing stuff well past probably what I paid for. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so and uh, Aaron, I've got stuff for you, uh, but uh, you still haven't sent me those Motu picks. Uh, finally, power! Oh, Loki, you got your power back. That's awesome. I thought you meant the power you had over me and Aaron. He does. I I got I got money. I got to send Loki, and we got to. I got a bunch of stuff I'm picking up from him too, man. He's got just amazing stuff. He'll, you know how it goes, man. He'll just shoot you a picture, and you'll be like, I gotta have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had, I had like he knows new, what we want. <laughs> I've got a whole new uh, order ready for him, just of troop builder shit. And then what's he do? He's like, "Oh, you only had the one catalog. Here's the other two. And I was like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Joe fighting, or actually no. Before we get into Joe fighting, I know uh, we talked about down south going to be on Punk tomorrow night, uh, and that's at what time again? Nine o'clock. Uh, I well, I hope it's at nine Eastern. That's one. Nine Eastern there. For <laughs> nine Eastern. 
Everybody who he, he out, hasn't sent me schedule yet, but I'm assuming he will at some point tomorrow. I mean, the show's always, always the same time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the show is. I don't know what time he needs to like brief me or what. I don't yeah, know what normally he you'll go on like 15 minutes before, 20 minutes before, so you guys can Four work out lives, the uh, yeah. mic and all that stuff. Yeah. That's what I figured. I I just like the I like to double down on redundancy. I know everybody else knows, but I'm the kind of guy that forgets, right? So it's just like, yeah, remind <laughs> me of that time and again. Uh, the only stupid question is the one you didn't ask, right? So, but <laughs> Loki, yeah, you'll be there. I know you will, guys. You guys are uh, you guys are awesome in the chats, by the way. Fuck, I have a good time. Part of my language. Damn it, will you have a good time in the chat? <laughs> no monetize on this live. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Yeah, monetized. so you said you're you you went ahead and monetized, Darren. Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, I did, time? man. I, I know I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I, I was like everybody was bugging me and they're like, Man, just go do it. And um so yeah, I know who I you've wanna, been talking to. That being <laughs> I know, said, I know who you've been talking to. That yeah. yeah, that being said though, man, when we cuss on our live streams, they put a little um a little orange money symbol and it means you're not going to get no ads ran because you're cussing, but I do have some live streams where I guess I didn't cuss that much and they do make money, so but oh. there's got to be a threshold though. Do you get like a guidelines for like how many I, times you can I say think Punk said you know not cuss like the first 15 minutes or something yeah that something i knew like that. i actually i was tried to stay aware of that in the one yeah. that me and pop blender did that mm -hmm. was it i think it was your live where pop blender had said like no we're only so far in we're good yeah like that's yeah what works okay yeah <laughs> yeah 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 no monetization yeah aaron so i wasn't at all surprised and, and it's good let's talk about this for a couple of minutes because we've got okay. one um uh, I think it's great that you are monetizing. Um, I think a lot of people aren't understanding monetization and what, yeah. it, what it brings. And I think that was made pretty clear the other night. So why don't you take a second to explain what it was you were on the fence about and what changed that for you? Well, um, to get monetized, you do have to go through a process of um, setting up your AdSense, and then you have to go back and forth with YouTube um, with just just getting like it takes a couple of days to, to get up to certain levels and, and get the back and forth. I'd, I'd say, you know, there, there's steps that you have to take to get to that point. So um, that took me a little bit and I, I, was, I was getting a little frustrated with it at times. And actually, my son came over and um, walk me through some details that I was just having trouble with, you know, understanding on the computer and whatnot. But um, that was holding me back. And, um, you know, um, I know, I mean, we all know when you first get monetized, you just, it, it doesn't bring hardly anything. Um, I've been monetized for probably like three weeks and you, you guys, you know, you know where my channel stands with subscribers and everything. And so far I've made, um, $38. So, you know, <laughs> you, you ain't, you ain't got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with that being said again you know like if you're into youtube for money you know you, you don't don't think you're going to be rich right off the rip that's for sure because you just need to be in it for the passion of joe or the passion of toys um because if if you're if you're in it for money and then you're you <laughs> see what you get you know in the beginning you're probably going to give up <laughs> okay and so this is the, I'm sorry, before I go on a little rant about it, now I'm going to try not to dedicate as much time as this took last night to have me discussed. Uh, oh, but man. I wanted, I definitely felt like Aaron had uh, a voice in that discussion that would have probably explained a couple of things to some people that needed to hear it. Uh, but did you have anything to say on the subject down south? Is this something you would be looking at down the line with your channel? Um, as of right now, no, um, I didn't start it for that. Yeah. Uh, it would it would be nice to have the income to put toward the channel, which is what everybody says. But it's not it's not a goal. No, no. So, maybe. I mean, we'll see. I don't ever see me having that many subscribers to do it. But if I did, I don't know. I may. Yeah. But it, it is not in the plan. I, I didn't start it to do that. 
Yeah. Right. And, uh, and Aaron, I don't think you, I don't know if you did or didn't. It's not a, that's I wasn't, not a category of anything, really. It's just, you know, what was your picture of YouTube? Really? That's all it is. Right? Yeah. So, but when I first started YouTube, it was more to like, um, to show people what I'm working on and to like, really like log my collection, you know, and, and have it like just somewhere where my kids can maybe turn that on later on, you know, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll be gone sometime or something and, and they want to um, go, go just watch dad for a little bit, you know, <laughs> That's, so, that was my dad, thoughts. Listen to dad talking about his jars of condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't watch the lives, kids. <laughs> what the yeah, hell the reviews? In my house. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, you know, there was there was only so much I could read last night and go, okay, like one, this was a conversation that happened just for something to happen. I knew that. Uh, two, it was a real test on punk, and I wanted to just take a second to say. Um, respect meter went up on punk on how he how he dealt with that on the site because i i was the guy saying this was very rude the way that this question came up about monetization immediately followed by this strong opinion that was debated on for the rest of the night and yeah. was side railing the live more yeah. or well it really was i'm not i i don't I don't, I ain't even going to talk about it other than it, it pissed me off. And I agree that he handled it. He handled it much better than I expected after yeah. the first five or 10 minutes, yeah. much better than I would have, but I really wish action figs had been there. Cause he'd have, he'd have put, he would have laid into him. <laughs> yeah. I would have gave that, him the hammer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matthew, I think Matthew probably would have too, but I, I really yeah. feel like action would have. Yeah. yeah. I, props to Punk, man, for having patience, man. Oh, yeah, man. I got a quick impression for you. And uh, no offense to Punk, but I have to do this one because I was like, oh, <laughs> yes. Right? Uh, let me get my glasses back on. <laughs> right. uh, it's a little layout. This was my impression of Punk the moment that comment came on, right? So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's wow. pretty good. <laughs> okay, and I was like, "Yeah, man, what do you say to that?" That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's about that's about what I saw on my end too. That's pretty good. Because I that. wanted to just like blow up the comment and be like, "I I have to be reading that comment wrong." The sad part like is, guys, is um when that yeah, stuff was, was going right. down, I was kind of winding out. I was really tired from working, and, and, and on, I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't really in the chat, but I was yeah. listening, so I knew it was going yeah. on. But I also knew Punk was handling it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was I, in the like, throes of Ambien, so I I don't want to I don't want to waste much more time even talking about that sideshow. It was what it was, and we'll leave it. But uh, what the one thing I wanted to say about monetization because I I was the same way. I I didn't start this at all with any ideas of or misconceptions of this is going to be a job. You know, I'm going to make an income. This was a retirement fun gig. Um, but what people don't realize about monetization, I think this is a very valid point, especially when we're talking about Aaron. You have to think about your average channel and what they're doing for, like, what are they doing for the extra content that they're as they're, they're getting the monetization for? Like, right. super chat, whatever, like the, the, the other chats that are going on what additional content they're giving you access for. Like there was that whole discussion, but what about the contests that you win by that guy when they hit this mark and they do this mark and they're sending you all this stuff and they're paying for the shipping and handling and they're doing all that administrative costs. That monetization takes a bit of the bite off that. Yeah, and if that, a little bit. you know what ends up happening? Those contests freaking happen more. <laughs> right. So as as you can see though, when I send when I send out prizes and I do giveaways, I do it for the love of the community and yeah. because I'm I'm able to. Yeah. It's nothing with monetize. I'm not making no money. I'm doing it because I actually love all you guys. <laughs> and I didn't and that I wanna say real quick, you were asking me my intentions when I first came to YouTube and I, I talked about them. And that was before I, I understood that there was like friendly people in a community and it's become so much more since since I've started YouTube that I have different reasons of why I've come on now. 
because I want to, I want to hang out with you guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the main reason right now. <laughs> yeah, and that's what, Like that was just it. I was like off for three days because one, <clears throat> I was busy too. I was like, everybody else is unavailable and I don't want to, I don't want to talk about all of that. So we covered it. I want to let it go. Uh, but I just wanted to cover it with you guys. Cause I know Aaron just got the monetization and I know it's just one of those things that people aren't going to understand until they put it in a bit of perspective. But, uh, I wanted to quickly say hi to a couple of people that joined us in the chat there. Damon Knight uh, has joined us in the chat and War Chest Full of Toys as well. What's up, Damon Knight? War Chest Full of Toys, yeah. <laughs> what does he say? I don't play with that um, Amban, bro. I woke up in boxers with taco and breakfast burritos from Brands and 6 a.m. And I don't remember <laughs> leaving the house. Yeah, he was responding to my talking about when all that shit happened the other night. I said I, yeah. I was in the throes of Ambien because that last <laughs> that last 30, 40 minutes, if you stay up, it's kind of foggy. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I, uh, I've spent a lot of money on toys in that last hour of being awake. <laughs> <laughs> Where you just kind of mashed the buy button and forgot what it was immediately. Like, yeah. Uh, like, oh, that's yeah. good. And then I'll I'll be I'll get a the Amazon thing. Like your order is out for delivery. Like what, what order? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> there goes my account again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um hey, you guys want to talk about who would win a fight? Yeah, let's do it. Hell let's yeah. do it. So, I don't know. If... Went down, guys. Is uh, we we let one of you guys pick the first fighter, and we have let the people in the chat name the contestant, and then we'd see if you guys have the figure. We put it there, and then we just talk about it as a, as a roundtable in the categories of long range equipment, medium range, and then close quarters, and who would win, and then we just move on to the next one. Okay. Does that sound? That sounds good. I, I I didn't I didn't necessarily know all the rules, so I grabbed like two two good guys and two bad guys that I wanted to fight together. But I didn't know oh, that. that. There's that. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure either. So I grabbed <laughs> what I would propose for my battle. But before we get started, I um, you say the word. Let us you dictate what you want to do. But I do I do want to show off the ultimate victor it doesn't matter who goes up against them so let me know whenever you're ready and well, he's, he, yeah, he's, got the, he's got the super bad gi joe character <laughs> oh nice um yeah so i like what you guys did you guys came prepared with your own thing so why don't each of you do a fight and then we will hand one over to the chat and it's got to be somebody that we would have, guys. So, I mean, right off the bat, oh, shit. Today, <laughs> I heard, I heard uh, Wild Weasel versus Wild Bill. And I was like, wouldn't that be beautiful? How I thought about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was our good friend, uh, Crimson Cobra Commander, with that. That would be awesome. I but yeah, about that. Uh, Both pilots. Seeing as three stars got the, the things to show, nudge, nudge. Uh, why don't I give him the screen and he can kick this off? Are you good with that? Well, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I need to kill my camera for a minute and move it. I'll, I will, okay. um, I, okay. I'm still here, but I'm going to mute my cam and my mic just a second. And then I'll, I'll come back in with the mic. So, okay. Yeah. And when you come back into the mic, I'll hand you over the stage. Uh, okay. so Aaron down South doesn't want us to see all them piles of money. He's been making off YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what, that's what it is. <laughs> So I got a picture it's like, on my uh, other name and channel. <laughs> I got a picture of, like we're talking about the UFC, right? Like they, the 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 chat's gonna pick the big fight, but I mean, like, what are you guys introducing us right now? We know three stars gonna get it. Can you give us one contestant that you had in mind tonight? There, uh, my first contestant. You want my my pair, my my paired fight? No, nope, just one, one person, and then when your fight comes, you can reveal who they're fighting. Do, do, do. Who are we looking at here? It's Shadow Tracker. Damn, that's yes. a hard find up here. Good call. Shadow Tracker, baby. Yeah, brother. And I do have a contestant for him. Okay, so after three star draw, shows us his first match and uh, introduces us into what a bloodbath should look like. Uh, <laughs> you guys can make the suggestions, but once I say go, uh, we're going to roll into the first one. I see that makes sense with what Aaron and 
three star and I have in our collections. Shadow Tracker. People are speculating. Is it out back? Is it out back? You guys don't watch Aaron? Oh my God. <laughs> it, it's we all know it's Predator. All right, guys. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready here. I was before I turn the cam back on. Uh, does anybody have any predictions for this uh, ultimate badass? So the ultimate which, badass has to be Big Boa, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm okay. gonna go on the fringe. I'm gonna say that your ultimate badass. No, I gotta agree. It's Big Boa. Uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna give you the stage here. You're in solo layer, but all we see is the. Let's eyeballs. see. Let's see what we got. Yep. You got the you're, stage. You're all wrong. Oh, <laughs> grumpy bear! Oh, you bastard! <laughs> well, he's already beat the hell out of everybody. He's taking on all comers. Don't nobody want a grumpy bear. Oh, that's uh, funny. Isaac. Look how clean his knuckles look. Yeah. Yep. I don't like that smirk he's giving me either. Yeah. I want to come in there and wall up on his little yeah. Care Bear butt. <laughs> He just taunting everybody with that smirk, like bring he's your ass. Big, he's big. All he has to do is smush them, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's he, he's about the size of a fatal fluffy. Yeah. Just remember, guys, uh, Aaron, when you're making that extra content, there is a market of people that want to see you do your uh, jujitsu against a guy in a Care Bear outfit. Oh, I will do it. I will do it. <laughs> choke you out with your happiness. I choke Care Bears all night. <laughs> Low key. All right, let me reset this time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he licks off the blood. Nice, yeah. Loki. <laughs> All right. So, um, Aaron, or sorry, uh, three star, did you have your contestants ready to go or did you want Aaron to do his fight first then? Uh, Aaron can go ahead and do his while I'm getting this okay. guy out. <laughs> so, Aaron, I'm going to hand you the stage. And then, like I said, we'll break it into the, you know what I mean by long range, mid range, and then close quarters, right? Like the, the rifle, the pistol, and the fists, right? Yes. So, if we just talk about it in that way, then we're going to be able to sum it up. But uh, here you go. Who are, who are we facing today? All right, guys. My face off is between Shadow Tracker. And spirit. Damn. Hmm. All right. Isn't, isn't that an interesting That's group? a good one. That yeah. is. Right? So what do we what's Shadow Tracker coming with? Like I don't have that one. So Shadow Tracker, if he was in the long range, that's where we're gonna start off, right? Sure. Shadow Tracker has his bow. Okay. And um you can get a good 50 yard shot off with a bow. Pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Um, but Spirit, you know, has his nice little sniper type scoped out rifle there, you know. It it's so. not the same one as the 80s. I mean, that was basically a mag of oh what bolts, right? Mm-hmm. It looks like bolt action. He's got well, eyes that, in the sky. Yeah. That that bow and arrow is not touching. That looks like a what, like a a 308 or you know 4570 or something that arrow ain't coming close to the velocity and the range that that sniper rifle's got so right right and uh, somebody said it um but uh, in, he uh, has to Loki. think think of this he has to click his bolt and make noise he's got to make noise where uh man i've been really really silent with a bow especially when i'm hunting deer I'm not because I always I can't I don't know how to shoot a bow and a string I always hit them hands so I'm far from silent when I use a bow. <laughs> Spirit has freedom. Also, Crimson Cobra Commander yeah. brought up a good good fact. Yes, yeah. he has some backup, man. You don't get much more long range than that. Oh, bang! <laughs> so there's a long range battle right here. Oh. Yeah. Bo is gone. <laughs> Bo is gone. So, yeah, that raises a good point, right? Like, uh, I, I mean, Three Star, are you saying that Spirit has the uh, the long range? Are both of you saying that? Like, I, it does seem like Spirit's got the long range. I kind of... I, I think I think so, yeah. And plus, Spirit's got... You also forget, depending on where what canon you're listening to, Spirit's got the uh, the Native American, the, the other realm site 
two. If you're going to put that into play, if you're not, then he's got a freaking sniper rifle. So, but in uh, reality, I think they're both trackers. You know. Yeah, um, well, Spirit is. That was his. That's his oh, yeah. thing. Is is GI Joe tracker? Yeah. Sorry, I have to do this. Loki, you quoted the crow. I love it. Uh, we're going to go back there. All right. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, right at, okay. So, yeah, it does seem like he would get the advantage. And here's the thing the only point I would add before we would move on, because I think the chat more or less agrees, you know, that, that having that eagle, you know, would be your spotter. Shadow Tracker's whole lore is that he's a primitive hunter, right? Like, yes. he's. He is a stalker and he doesn't respect weapons like guns, really. He wants to yeah. do it old school. And I would think yeah. that the spirit is the, a similar kind of tie to the to the old warrior way of fighting, right? Yep. So I think the long range attack, while it would go to spirit, it wouldn't actually ever happen. Yeah, they would be, they'd both be trying to sneak up on each other and they're both capable of doing it. I think so too. They would want a more hand-to-hand -hand battle in the long run, I believe. I think so, Shadow Tracker would, but I think Spirit would, like, get all philosophical about it. And, you know, like, if I can take him out, see your enemy before he sees you or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I think Spirit's more than capable of uh, doing some wet work up close. I mean, we've seen him do it in the comics. So Yeah, just yeah. The most recent issues of gi joe would show you that he's uh he's a nasty bugger man <laughs> um yeah, we'll just do that oh, so yeah. what about mid-range if we moved on to mid-range with these guys because these guys are moving along to the next fight and i'm like we're not even done this one <laughs> okay so in the mid-range department you know we're talking handgun um obviously shadow i don't think shadow tracker comes with any guns right you know mm -hmm. i no. mean He's got the Bowie knife. He's got the bow, you he's know, got... handgun. You're still talking handgun versus bow, really. Mm -hmm. I see knives getting getting thrown, you know. Like yeah, a, you could throw like a knife. Practice with those. Yeah, yeah, he's got he's got that big Bowie knife. I mean, yeah. So, and you guys are both shooters. We both, we all, I think all, have you guys shot pistol and revolver before, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I've shot everything. What I, yeah. what I generally yeah, carry. Know what, uh, what close quarters response and range and, and groupings look like with a pistol, right? It's mm -hmm. only a real advantage at a certain range. And at that point, it's, you know, like you said, throwing knives. And does he have a hatchet? I thought he had a hatchet or maybe I'm thinking. Oh, he he does, does, man. You know what? He does, I think. So he's he got a couple a of things he can toss and keep himself armed with, right? So Yeah, I, I it must be on my on my shelf. I feel like Spirit probably should have had a tomahawk too, but they oh, probably that be didn't cool? want to lean they probably didn't want to lean too far into yeah. Native like, American. You might as well put a feather on his this, head. Yeah. <laughs> Right in in this day and age, but I honestly I feel like that would have been an awesome addition for Spirit to come with. It would have Tomahawk. been, but I mean, again, look at the pressure they felt to change his weapon because that thing had arrows on it, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but I, yeah. I agree. The, that hatchet, I mean, when I saw it on other characters, it's awesome. It's an awesome little tomahawk. I, but, yeah, I love the I love that thing. And a good point made there that bow would carry over into the mid range even better. Uh, so I mean, at that close quarters, like we've got, uh, does anybody have anything that would give them the advantage on the mid range? Because I have one thing that's missing out of all of this. And oh, he's back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but did, but uh, one thing Shadow Tracker is missing that he had originally, and I mean, it was a big deal, was his escape proof net. Did they cover that in the classified? No. No. No, I, di I didn't even know. I didn't know who this character was yeah, I didn't until either. I saw he was coming in classified because I didn't collect the uh, Pursuit of Cobra line. Yeah, and I, I I'd actually, I'd completely forgotten that there was a Pursuit of Cobra line if I ever saw it anywhere. Um, yeah. So I had to be educated on who he was because I thought he was a new made-up character. But I think uh, I saw somewhere that they 
they compensated giving him so much other stuff instead of the net because it would have been kind of hard to do on this scale. Seems like I saw somewhere, but no, he he didn't get the net too. Yeah, and I think that that's a uh, that really detracts from his his arsenal of the the original because yeah. that's trapping that that's making people defenseless. Like it gives them that ambush appeal. Yeah, and now setting booty like, traps. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right, and so that was the thing with the classified um, shadow tracker. Like you said, it was Pursuit of Cobra. A lot of us didn't know about it. Um, yeah, the lore that's there. I just feel like they kind of missed what was existing, and and yeah, it, it, you had to get into Shadow Tracker to find out anything. But the old figures of him, man, they looked really cool. Like I, I I don't know how I feel about the one Aaron's got in his hand. I mean, it's it's a good looking figure, but some of the masks kind of look different. Aaron, I give you the whole screen again. Um, but if you look at the the Pursuit of Cobra three and three quarter ones that they were doing, he kind of looked like uh. Like the Rastafarians from Predator Two, mixed with a bit of cheese. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's that's what everybody was like. Oh, it's, it's Gi Joe trying to do the Predator. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's it's a dude. It's a Aboriginal type native dude that prefers to hunt primitively, and he has dreadlock type hair. It got nothing to do with the fucking Predator, other than a mild similarity. <laughs> yeah, but I like you know just a quick thought on Shadow Tracker. This, that was an, another figure that I wasn't even going to get, but I was trying to get the first 100, so I had to get him, and I'm really? glad I did. I mean, the dude made my top 10 list last year, and it's some oh, really? that I – yeah, it was a figure that I had no – like, didn't know about him, didn't care about him, but I was like, yeah, he looks kind of cool, and he was one of my favorite figures that come out last year. That's what happened to me, too. I fell yeah. in love with him when I got him. I yeah, see I think he was like six or seven on my list. I uh, I watched uh, <clears throat> King Beastman. I think it's King Beastman eight eight two or something like that, mm -hmm. and he did an entire squad of Shadow Trackers, and that was the first time I ever started paying attention because after before that, I kind of had him in the same category as Viper, where it was like I had heard of this character but knew zero on them because it was after that gen. But yeah, yeah. Booty traps, yeah, booty traps. Mm -hmm. We're That's what I said, <laughs> sitting booty traps. So let's just uh, let's get this booty gun down and go close quarters combat. That's what it comes down to. It who's going to win in that fight between the two of them? Because yeah, um, mm. right now that's what I want to hear in the chat. Just give us one name and one word why, right? And uh, Aaron, you can give us a reason why it's who wins. Close I'm. Quarters. So you want me to give the reason of, of who I who I think wins and why? Well, win, who wins close quarters and therefore wins the match, right? Because they've been kind of. Um, this is this is why um close quarters is going to be won because um, spirit has two knives, and um spirit is a bad mofo and he battles storm shadow on the daily. <laughs> All right, so he's gonna handle shadow tracker like. And that's why he wins. <laughs> okay. Uh rebuttal by down south. Any uh, shadow tracker. I think shadow tracker wins. Um all has he got a bigger knife. <laughs> yeah, that's not a knife. Well, that's a knife. Yeah, that's where shark eyes when you need him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I say shadow tracker because of the brutality. Um Okay. Spirit has a code of honor, not that he wouldn't do what he needed to win in a fight, but Shadow Tracker doesn't seem to have any from what I take from that character. And he's very primal. They make it really clear that he is um super Brutal. duper primal and he is a top notch hunter, do anything to get his prey. And he would go do it by any means necessary if he could get you know, if he's up close, which is what we're talking, he does have the giant knife. Dude's also got some giant ass biceps. If he ever gets a hold of you, I think it's over. That's a good point. Good point down South 77. Yeah. He is brutal. So, yeah, that's a, that's a 
man, did you pick two good contestants, like two close <laughs> combat specialists? <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying Snake Eyes versus Storm Shadow without saying Snake Eyes versus Storm Shadow. <laughs> right? I, uh, I thought it was a good mix, man. I've always and I, I yeah, have thought about yeah, it that. was. You know, Thank both you. make good arguments, and I'm reading the chat, and you know, like there's character traits that we have to consider with spirit as far as you know, uh do you believe in his ancestors? Do you believe in the lore? You know, considerations. He trains with many. He trains with snake guys and fights Joe's on daily PT, right? Where yep. Shadow Tracker is kind of, he works alone, right? So I'm going to lean, and it's not an easy call, but I think Spear wins it by one hair. And that hair being both guys know how to fight with close combat weapons. Both guys know where the major artery groups are to, yep. you know, yep. get that one sting and make the guy leave. Right, if not kill him, but yeah, where Shadow Tracker is the one that's going to kill, right? I don't think he's ever been bested by somebody who fights his way, and I think if anyone's going to fight his way and best him, I think it's Spirit. Very good, very good. Um, I wanted to say real quick, guys, I have a, I can hear it outside. I have a really brutal storm going, so if I get eighty six for any reason, that's why. <laughs> well. It's probably dropping half of Loki War Two stuff on your house right now. <laughs> now I got to look at the radar and see how long before it gets here. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we're only three hours away. <laughs> um, well, we've been going for about an hour twenty, uh, and so War Chest of the uh, what you saying? He's going with Aaron on this one. Shadow's going to take Indigenous people down. <laughs> so. Ta oh, taking indigenous people's beat down. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, wait, he sided with Spear. What do you mean? <laughs> okay. Uh, and Legend Series is with us. Hey, thanks very much for joining us tonight. And thanks for, yeah. Okay, so that was Aaron's fight. Let's do one from Three Star. We'll do one from the chat. We'll call it a night because that's going to go on for a while. Oh, we got to see yours, Crow. We got to well, see Wait a minute. <laughs> well, I, wanna see I didn't have one. I was, uh, was going to randomize. But oh. <laughs> But All right. Maybe I'll think of one in between. But let's see. There you go. Three star. Did you have one? You said you had a couple put aside. Yeah, I've got. I had a, a couple. I was thinking about. And mine are, mine are kind of similar to what Aaron's were. I, I was trying to pick figures that were similar, uh, similar background, similar um, specialties, uh, similar in, in many ways. None of them are ninjis. Uh, anytime we ever do this, it will never be a ninji from me. Um, <laughs> oh, you guys don't have to worry about that. So I was thinking, like, you know, if you read all of, if you read the Joe's file cards, yes. they're all some kind of Delta Force, Green Beret, Rambo, <clears throat> special ops, yeah. whatever. And if you read Cobra Soldiers, it makes all of them look like they are top-notch crack military, you know, unit members. And we all know they're all inept as much as we like them. But uh, so I was trying to think of some characters that were a lot of similarities. And I, somebody has already said both of them in the chat. I have not seen anybody put them together. So grab my camera here and swing it around. And I will just you know, get everybody dizzy and show you. Uh, oh yeah crop master go. versus outback yeah yes. now well, we're talking up now. <laughs> okay good so crop master and outback now crop master he's the cobra defensive specialist a gator he's the guy that'll that'll ambush you in the swamp and then outback's the guy that's going to figure out a way through the swamp so that's a great fight <laughs> I thought so. That's awesome, man. I, yeah. I never thought of that pair, <laughs> but that's awesome. All right. So <clears throat> why don't I see already speculation on who's going to win it? But I mean, down south, this is uh, this is your barn burner. How's the fire start with the long range stuff? Uh, neither one of them really are super long range. I mean, even the 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 rifle that Outback comes with, it's like it's like a hybrid SMG, um, you know, AR, I'm not even sure yeah. what it's really supposed to be, but it's, 
you know, it could possibly at that size be like a, uh, you know, a seven, six, two at that size. So that's a pretty long range uh, rifle, but of course we also know it has no stock. So yeah. if it is some sort of a, of a SMG and he's firing bullets that don't have a lot of range, uh, croc master might be able to sneak through that. Uh, I, as far as long, what long range capabilities there are, I would probably have to give it the outback unless Crocmaster has his crocodiles trained so well they could flank him while he's distracting them yes. and distracting outback and have some crocs come up behind <laughs> him because there's only so many bullets in that magazine and they're not going to stop many crocodiles. And that's what Crimson but Cobra for, Commander said. Where's Fiona? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was trying to keep yeah. it kind of fair, so it's just say <laughs> they caught him without uh, Fiona. So, yeah. in, in um, if we're grounding it kind of in reality, which is what we're doing, I would probably give the long range back. That's fair, Aaron. What about uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, on the long range, I'm definitely going with Outback only, uh, because he has the, uh, the, the gun that is a little better, you know, um, I think Croc Master only comes with a, some type of handgun, mm -hmm. um, long range, it, it, it's Outback all day long. Um, you know, he's out there in the bush, he's out there in the field, you know, and, uh, you know, Croc's just kind of hanging out in the swamp looking like a sore thumb, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well he doesn't well, uh, acts like not, in a tree somewhere <laughs> yeah and he's not really um croc master's not really a long range type fighter he is a oh shit what did i just stumble up onto is this dude right. in a wrestling get up with a bunch of crocodiles so yeah 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 uh so hmm. see i the, the thing is about the um sorry i'm just trying to find anything that would tell me what kind of rifle because you're right it does look like an ar that he's got uh the, that type but i'm having a technical blur with uh sorry yeah we can only i mean we can some some of the weapons they're and, pretty clear cut what they okay. are and you can usually anything, surmise uh, what caliber yeah, yeah but so anything with a barrel is going to shoot better than a handgun well, and that's just it. And so this is his patrol weapon. And the reason I was calling it up, and I'm going to do this here just really quick, because you're right, uh, he has an advantage with it, but this is a compact stock. Like, they got rid of the stock. Yeah. yeah. And so when I was in, I had a, a version that was like this called the C8, which was based on a on an M16 and then shrunk down for, for a vehicle crew. So it had a shorter barrel and a very short collapsed stock. And it was very small, but it still had a stock. And the reason it had a stock was that buffer spring, right? So when mm -hmm. I see a weapon like this, I'm like, what's going on with the return action on that weapon? Because I don't know how yes. it functions without a buffer spring. Right? That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that size uh, optic is not going to do a whole lot of good on something like that either, because you've got no stock to separate your eye from that distance. Yeah, see, right. now Loki, Loki knows guns a bit, I guess, and uh, he's saying bufferless AR. So, I mean, the point of fact is I don't know how bufferless weapons work. <laughs> really, I have never been exposed to one. So, uh, yeah, I think we can all agree that Outback would have a ranged weapon uh, advantage here. Question is, would he ever see Crocmaster? Yeah, that's the other thing is, um, you know, if, if they are in swamp, even I say even if they are in woods but especially if they're in wetlands i don't know that he would ever see croc master because he's fully capable of submerging you know he has uh yeah. he's got the he's got the breathing tubes he's got the the air the regulator so he may never even see him he might uh he might be just looking through that that site looking at you know uh moss <laughs> yeah well i mean Considering that the, the you know we've got them matched up together, let's just assume that uh, Croc is not in the Sahara Desert right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're Nor definitely in a jungle swamp. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, uh, a swamp kind of area. So if we moved into, because I agree with everything you're saying so far, mid-range attacks. Now this is where um, I kind of see 
Crocknoss are taking the advantage. Just by mid range at this point, I, I, we're talking pistol range, right? Uh, that's also crocodile range too. So yeah, uh, and meat. That, hook. That, <laughs> yes. Well, I'd that's say what? that's probably the the, the meat hook. <laughs> I'd, I'd say that's probably a little closer, but uh, I guess forget. you can throw it. You can. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I thought we were in close range. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, no, it's a good point. There's some things that he has in close range too, but I mean, like the bull whip, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I think uh, mid range. I think Crockmaster takes it uh, if he's too close for um, less out, outbacks just blind firing. Um, I think Crockmaster with his pistol and everything he could throw and the quickness that he could hide or submerge. Uh, and the fact that he's, you know, maybe not, he couldn't send those crocodiles long range, arguably, but I think mid range and, and closer, if he's got them nearby, he's going to give the command. And I think it's over for Outback. Yeah. And yeah. I, I imagine he would be stronger than Outback too. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Size of the figure alone, I'm sorry, but schoolyard rules might makes right. I think uh, he'd fold them up. Well, that's one thing we said, you know, when when the Outback figure came was like, this dude is, he, why is he so jacked? Like, he should be, he should be a more slender, um, you know, muscular, but he should not have, you know, he shouldn't have 24 inch pythons, brother. <laughs> Are you sure about that, brother? Age doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he hasn't withered away like most guys at fifty. <laughs> yeah, I love that Tiger Force Outback. I haven't opened mine because I never had him as a kid, so I was holding out for the the regular one that you know the one that I got here. I was holding out for that Outback. Uh, I do really like that Tiger Force one though. I love the old man Outback head. It was. I Oh, no. oh, I'm sorry. I haven't. I haven't. Oh, well, my power just flickered. Oh, you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I might go away, guys. Sorry if I do. Um, I haven't opened my original Outback. No. I don't know why. I just opened the Tiger Force. I had to get him open because I took him uh, last summer when I first started doing pictures with these guys. I took him down to my camper and went down to the creek down there at my camper and took him and a bunch of guys and set them up. In the woods, I took Spirit and took some really good pictures of them uh, down there. So I had to get him. I was waiting for Outback to do those pictures. So nice. Like, nice. They, uh, so I've got I got a really cool okay. shot of him up on this log. I'll have I'll find it and send it to you. Nice, awesome. So, um, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna. Crogmaster is also kind of a dumbass too. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> When you leave somebody on defense, usually it can often mean that they're not going to do you any good on offense, right? So, um, okay, so yeah, I got my Tiger Force out back when I was in Toronto, and Toys R Us out here actually had an abundance of these things towards the end, and you were able to get it on clearance. But this was long before I was uh, even knowing anyone else in this community. I think I was probably 30 videos in at that point. But uh, so we did the mid range. Now we're doing the mid range. Sorry, uh, Crockmaster clearly having the advantage. So I, I I can see that. Aaron, do you can see that too? Yeah. Dude. So close quarters. Who's going to get it? And I mean, yeah, I think we know the answer. But is there anything besides the Gator that's really working for Croc? And go through it. Uh, oh, me you know yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Aaron, sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the camera like we're all having a conversation. Like, <laughs> you know I'm looking at you, Aaron. Come on. <laughs> go through Croc, Croc Master's close quarters. Is that what we're getting at here? I was thinking. Yeah. The, um, I don't know, man. That that meat hook, man. I mean, holy smokes. I mean, if, if he just slung it and he, you got to think he's got an extension um, advantage, you know, with that meat hook. But, I mean, it. it if he's slinging that, and he, what else has he got? I don't have my croc master with me, but he, he got has the uh, he's got he has the, he's there. got the boot knife, and he, he also and has Fiona's spiked collar with a chain. Right. So even, 
you know, if I that's mean, handy is, without Fiona, yeah, he's got, he's got the, that the big magnum. old 45 mil man, whatever, 357 man, whatever it is. Man, I don't know, man. I you think he just, I think he would be too much to handle, yeah, in close yeah. quarters. I, I, yeah, I think by consensus, I think we're all saying like this goon just. He's like, uh, like you said before, Bane, right? Like, snap at the back, like uh -huh. I'm a, a with money. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, um, yeah. But the other part of it is, Mac, can you imagine how this guy would smell grappling with him? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be yeah enough I wouldn't even want to get close to him. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat pit, right? You're done. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to break his legs regardless, but I wouldn't want to be close to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the whip. That's the other thing, right? Like, um, Yeah, I always forget the whip because I don't Oh, yeah, the it. whip, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you're a guy the size of Croc Master, as stupid as he might be, you know, he could be the dumbest guy in the world, but look at Master Blaster back in uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, yeah. right? Yeah. Still snap yeah. you. Twig. Yeah, I like what but, Jay Astro says right there. He, he'd pop out, he'd pop out back his head like a grape, like the like the mountain did to Oberon in uh, yeah. Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. you go, like wrapping that whip around a guy's neck and pulling and dragging oh, him yeah. towards where he's going to feed Fiona, right? Like just that sick and, and that hook set in under the ribs like a bad horror movie. Yeah, oh, I think yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, and we all only seen, hope we've all seen what Indy can do with a whip, you know. <laughs> I was gonna say you can you can only hope that he's dumb enough to throw the whip to somebody else while he's trying to get the idol and swing over the ravine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody, Indy was awesome Cobra. with the whip. Yeah, somebody on uh, Cobra has his back and will help him across that obstacle. Uh, yeah. All right, so. Stay that's a good loud. match. That's a good match um, down south. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I, I thought that one would probably be pretty good. Yeah, that was really good. I did like that. <laughs> say it loud. Say it again. All right, uh, guys, I'm going to switch it up because I don't want to go past uh, two hours at the most. So before we get into just a fan one, I'm going to do the one I have. Yes. And uh, because I came up with it uh, <laughs> on the fly. Yeah, this is your idea. We're going to see crows. <laughs> but you know what? This one is, uh, this one, I got to do this one for uh, Roman in the chat, if he's still here. Uh, because back when I did initially uh, do this on my own channel for fun, um, he had asked me to do uh, somebody fighting one of these. Oh, yeah. Right? So I was like, uh, yeah, a range viper. I finally have one. Roman's owed a range viper fight. Was it, yeah, I think it was Roman that was asking for it. But uh, I'm going to I'm gonna say range viper, it doesn't matter if he's 788 or 412 or 911. It's just a range viper. Right. And uh, we'll kick it off against my new homie here. Ooh. That's a good one. I don't have them yet. <laughs> oh, Roman, you're still there. Me either. Yeah. Surgeon Slaughter wins. So, yeah, that was one of my very first ones I did was Croc Master versus Sergeant Slaughter, and he ate Sergeant Slaughter too. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, so, both Recondo. these guys, Rakondo, I can relate to. R uh, range Viper, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. If I go through the long range kit with him, you have a grenade launcher and you have a uh a support weapon like a uh another um like saw basic yep right so both of those are an abundance of suppression and and yes like kill zones of beaten massive zones, yeah, right? yeah it so, doesn't matter what you're behind when you get a gr grenade launcher shooting a grenade at you you're, you're gonna blow up yeah <laughs> unless you're a predator <laughs> there's, there, yeah. there's no such thing as a Hollywood grenade, right? That thing goes off. You're not going to see this big fireball. What you're going to see is like a a wave of air just shake everything free as shrapnel goes blowing through it, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, cover means nothing um, unless it goes on the other side. So 
does Ricondo have anything? I, I know what he's got, but in your eyes, because I know you guys are hunters and I don't hunt, right? I, I did my shooting for, for other shit and that was done. So for <laughs> hunting in woods, you know, uh, the, the, the long rifle effect versus the suppression firepower in dense woods, does Ricondo actually have an advantage with this? Uh, I, I think... Say- Yep. Did he freeze? Oh, did we freeze? Did I freeze? Oh, yep. You're back. Nothing's frozen. <laughs> I, I, <think laughs> I, asked, I, asked I see glitches. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm trying to get at is like uh, when you guys, if you picture in the woods, right, and somebody's spraying bullets, they're giving away their position a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, with a grenade launcher, not so much, but with Recondo, like we're talking about a, a sneaky peeky guy again, like Outback. So I think the, the range viper has the advantage, but when I hand it over to you guys, also, does the range viper have any psychic powers? I don't get the hose in the back of the helmet. Hmm. I think it's like a, a rebreather type setup for that helmet. And the helmet's just there to terrify people. Yeah. yeah I, I, the it hose is, is kind of confusing too, but that's what yeah. I always took it to be was. He had a he had an air supply or at least an emergency air supply. It is supposed somewhere. to be a, a trooper in that you know range viper um, helmet and all that too. You know some kind of cobra trooper. Did, uh, speaking of, real quick, guys, did you see the person that hollowed out one of those heads and made it into a helmet? No. no. Oh, that was fantastic. I think it was on Facebook. They actually took a Dremel, hollowed out the whole head of the Range Viper gently yep. until you could see the eyes. And then they put up, you know, just a regular like ninja face or whatever on there. Um, and um, wow. it fit it fit right over. It looks so good. It looks so good. Wow. Okay. Well, Shane's saying that. Sorry. Uh, same time toys are saying there's no powers there. It's just, uh, just that. And I mean, we can yeah. understand the ass, right? We're talking a world of Dr. Mind member, Crystal Ball, and, and, uh, mutants, right? So maybe, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Cliff. And so no. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, who do you guys think has the advantage in that point? I guess the long range part again. Honestly, I think I can see, I can see Ricondo having a shot, but not the advantage, just because the pure amount of firepower that Range Viper can lay down. Yeah. If Ricondo could get secluded enough um his rifle i mean it's like a ebr or something so it, it if, could be a little he, more precise yes if he could get if he could get into a position where they couldn't he couldn't be seen and get a clear enough shot while uh range viper is busy with the recoil from his saw or from his grenade launcher or the smoke that it's putting down Yes. If Rakondo gets a clear shot through it, you better hope that brain helmet is bulletproof. <laughs> and that's, a, that's a really good point. That's something we never see in the cartoon or in the movies. Well, I mean, unless it's a really good movie. But uh, th- these uh, saws, right? Well, so Canada, it's a C9, but they're they're 5.56, five, and you can yep. swap mags between the other rifles, right? Yep. But they jam like nothing. Like, yeah. they yeah. constantly have double feeds, uh, barrel barrel overheating, gas flow gone, right? So, I mean, like, there's a lot of stoppages with high rates of fire weapons. But, I mean, Ricondo is using iron sights. Yep. He is that old school, right? Yeah, he can't uh, get it caught. can't have them optics getting caught in vines and stuff while he's sneaking through the jungle. So. But, honestly, sometimes I prefer iron sights, especially if I'm not doing, like, long, long range shots. That's why I carry my 30-30 in the woods. And um, it does have a scope on it, but you can look right below it in iron sight anytime yeah. you want. I've never met a guy. Well, I can't sight in a scope for shit, so. <laughs> I've ne- need yeah, a lot exactly. of bullets. A lot of the times, it's guys don't want to dick around with different kind of tech sites that they're just learning. But a guy <laughs> who sticks to iron sights is a guy who knows the kind of shooting he does. That's right? how my grandpa always taught me. Oh, everything was iron sighted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we learned iron sights before we learned anything else. And uh, yeah, I mean, you're a better shot for learning it that way. But my, the, you know, going to something that uh, Drawl brought put up there before I move on to mid range, 
is uh, one thing that these suppression weapons are doing to Ricondo is taking away his stealth advantage, like we'd say, by uh, being able to quickly move from place to place stealthily. As soon as he starts getting light up, he's ricondo has got to react and he's got to move fast. He can't creep. He can't cr uh, like stalk anymore. He's got to get the frig out of dodge. So the game's over as far as Ricondo's stealth advantage, unless he can break contact and come again, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so what do you guys think about mid-range? I'm going to put the camera on down south. Uh, mid-range weapons, right? So we know he's got uh, pistols. Each of them got pistols. Yeah, I think it. I I've, I've, I think that comes the range viper too, because he's definitely going to have better protection. Um, you know, Ricondo is going to be good at mid-range, but I see Ricondo as more of picking people off with that rifle or using his ability to hide in the environment mid range. Um, you know, if he's down to his pistol and it's versus a fully geared up armored up range Viper, I've got to say, you know, if they don't have much cover between them, I've got to give it the range Viper cause he's going to be able to take those shots better. Keep coming, absorb the shock. I mean, Ricondo's not wearing any body armor. He's just wearing a, you know, a khaki shirt. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's actually huge. That's yeah, true, Aaron, what do you think? That's a good point. I'm 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 right on um down south with that. Um <clears throat> the range viper looks like he's more protected in that mid range, you know, kind of kind of battle. And um yeah, I I I definitely have to go with the range viper on mid for sure. Yeah. Yep. So again, on mid, right? <clears throat> uh, yeah. If it's coming down to pistol on pistol, you'd have to think that that armor point comes into play when you're talking about frag fragmentation grenades and, and bits of bark flying off tree near you, yep. things like that. There's a high likelihood that if he did disrupt Ricondo with that first range volley, Ricondo might actually be bleeding a little bit from yeah, be dazed range. from yeah. the concussion of the the grenades you know he could he could daze him like fishing with dynamite you know <laughs> like just yeah. get up on him what kind of pistol does ricondo have because mine's back there somewhere yeah so he's got a very um he's got a short action it's like a six sour type right like um, okay so like probably <laughs> nine millimeter or something yeah it's a very a small action one okay that's probably not going through any of that body armor no no I was saying, you know, I, I couldn't remember. I knew he had one, but unless it's like, um, you know, like that Magnum or something, it, it's not going through that body armor, probably. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah Loki, nine millimeter SIG, that's what it looks like. I don't see Ricondo carrying a SIG, though, but that is what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like so, a little yep. gun, man. Yep. There we go. There, I had my yeah. mic. There on. you are. There. Um, yeah, so I'm inclined to agree. Uh, the big thing for me is um, the only thing that would be saving Ricondo at that point is, you know, that that <laughs> that training he had with his unit. And he's part of, like, what is it, the 1st Reconnaissance Battalion or something like that. Yeah, it's he's got funny. a history of stalking and evading and using ground and things like that. So, I mean, clearly... He's at a disadvantage, but I think if anybody's going to stand a chance of breaking contact once discovered, he, at best, he's going to be able to put trees between them and try and maybe clover leaf around um, this guy who's trying to get over the, the noise of his own weapons right now, right? Yeah. And just trying to use the ground around him. But yeah, I think he's losing the fight a lot right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so... I think I dropped my Ricondo hat, which is beautiful. <laughs> Don't lose it. Yeah. Man, Loki, I gotta get that Loki, retro <laughs> Loki says Ricondo may have speed on his side, and he definitely would because he's not carrying a rocket launcher and a light machine gun and mm -hmm. full body armor. So that is a factor, but he's got to get close enough to use that. Uh, you know, he's got he's to get close enough to make that speed work for him unless he's evading. And yeah, I mean, we have a good point, though, Loki. I wouldn't have even asked, but why why are his eyes red? Is this infrared? Is this thermal? Scary. Like, does he have an advantage with vision? 
He he'd been on that wacky tobacco too. <laughs> yeah, that could be. That's what the that's what the, the that's what the hose stuff. is for. <laughs> but it's a gas mask. Yeah. But, uh, here, yeah, that, another, that's a good point. What what's in the helmet? Cobra. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's so, in the helmet though? What kind of optics? What kind of sound enhancement? We we don't know that. That's all speculation. So, right. That, that's and, a good point too. How and, advanced is that helmet? So, I, I, Aaron, you're a big Cobra guy, right? So, uh, the thing I didn't know about. Oh shit! I just removed. Oh, there he goes. No. Did you boot him? I did. Let me go back. There we go. I just—I <laughs> uh, was backstage, no, fellas. I was trying to get you the whole stage, so we're gonna go solo there. There. Uh, so, Aaron, one thing I noticed, like, uh, I did—I didn't really know a lot about the Range Viper, but he's a troop builder, is he not? Yeah. Um, Range Viper is definitely, most definitely, a troop builder. Um, I've seen some armies. I, I unfortunately was not. Um, was not, it was very hard for me to get a range viper. Yeah. Um, I ended up trading someone and I think it's somebody on here. I can't even remember cause I do so many damn trades. Who, who <laughs> traded the range viper? I, I bet they're in the chat right now. <laughs> down South. It wasn't you, right? We traded. No, no I would. No, I, I got you. you we saw you saw up to me, a snow serpent for one of my eels. Yes. You got me. My first that was how we first met. <laughs> yeah. So I, I wasn't able to, to army build those figures, man, but. I would love to one day. I mean, if I come across a pile of range vipers on eBay, yeah, yeah, decent price. I'll snatch them up. No, I was just, I was curious, just because I was wondering, like maybe that's what's going on in the helmet. Like you have your troop net, maybe you know, right. while he's flushing yeah. Bracondo out, he's calling for reinforcements the whole damn time, right? <laughs> right. They got these little knobs on the side of their helmet too that I can imagine them twisting and dialing in and adjusting like vision or whatever, you know, or something. Yeah, or it's spot a cool helmet. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so Lando Calrissian can send him commands to activate. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so close combat. I mean, again, we're dealing with uh a hatchet now. We've got that tomahawk with right. this guy. Yep. Right. Sorry, I keep calling it a hatchet, but this is like your tomahawk, you know, Cabela's Saturday night special versus right. The Gakari, right? So the huge fighting knife. Um, the Gurkhas use these, and there are so many <laughs> stories of some brutal kills with these. These are like little mini swords. Um, I don't know. I kind of, for me, I'm leaning with the chat. If you can fight with a Gakari, um, I think you're doing better than a guy with a tomahawk. And uh, that's that tomahawk's got two sides that's going to do damage for sure. But the grace of this thing is, I, I think I'm being biased, but does anybody have a counter argument? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, they're both, they're both going to be pretty damn, pretty damn lethal. I've got a, uh, a buddy that is, um, he, he owns a private security company and, seen a lot of action and he absolutely loves that knife like yeah. he he carries one whenever he can carry one he carries he actually tries to carry one of those under his jacket like in a upside down yeah. mount um so i know what you're talking about with the action that they they seen in the stories um that 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 hatchet though man Mm. I don't know. Uh, I can see. I can see them being just about even, like you said. It's double sided. It's going to be an iron handle, so there's probably not, or a graphite or something. There's probably not going to be a lot of chance of slicing through that handle on the hatchet, and he can counter the knife and throw it off with that point on the other side of it. If he can count it without getting his fingers chopped off, I can see in the, be those being close to even. Yeah, both bad. I um, I uh, I I just thought of something else too. I think on a file card that I read for the Range Viper is that their specialty is being able to stay out in the wilderness and survive off of whatever is is around. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
exactly. know that you got to think if you're doing that you're skinning animals you're cutting animals and you you um you become like very handy with a knife not saying that Ricondo isn't handy with a knife because i'm sure he's killed a bunch of animals and you know yeah he's gonna be able to do that stuff too probably. The, the more you handle you know the more you handle a knife you know you, you're gonna you're gonna be good with it yeah, yeah. It's Persistent. basically just being Bear Gillis, right? Like, mm. live off the land, and uh, you don't need to go in for resupply. So you're a, a blessing on the logistics side of Cobra, because they don't have to spend a dime on you after they send you out. Right. right. They, they, uh, that's what I read. They maintain yeah. the, themselves. They know nothing. Up, out, they can survive long, long times out, out in the wild. Yeah, they're used to shit support. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think you're right. Like I said, and I have a bit of a bias because, like I said, uh, I just I, I happen to know a little bit about the knife, like your buddy down south, and it's but it's it works against his character as well. What I know about this knife is that in the hands of a Gurkha, this is a damn nightmare, right? But Rakanda was not a yeah. Gurkha. Right, he's not a Gurkha, he is an American soldier using a Gurkha's knife. Uh, and if we go into what we were saying earlier, Range Viper's been dominating this combat, keeping <coughs> Ricondo on bad footing the whole time, possibly clipping him with some stuff. That tomahawk, you're right, I think there's uh, there's some there's an advantage going on here. That as much as I like that knife, I'd have to think that maybe this isn't Ricondo's fight. What does the chat think? One word. Yes, no. <laughs> Who wins? Rakondo or, or Rakondo or Range Viper, guys? Rakondo or Range Viper. Nobody. God. Nobody wins? Is it a draw? <laughs> all right. No. I, I believe that out of all that we reviewed, that would be the closest to a draw. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm giving it the Range Viper. I like Rakondo, but I'm going back to basically. If they're close range and, and it comes down to a close range fight, say all they've got is uh, Rakondo's blade and Range Viper's uh, axe, I'm going back to the body armor. Yeah. Uh, Rakondo's going to be awful, have to be awful damn fast to hit a point to penetrate it. And that's not a stabbing blade. So he's not going to get up under the helmet when the, in the neck he, he's he might get lucky and get under an armpit or something but i think it's going to go back down to whatever's left the range viper's body armor and ricondo has got a mobility advantage but he's just he's just too unprotected he's more he is a reconnaissance guy he's not a battle guy so i'm i'm saying range viper okay and Turk Murph, you made a great point, man. Am I the only one who wants a chick fight next? <laughs> oh, Damn, it, right man. Damn it. Damn it. Make that Come happen, on, too. Yeah. So I think the consensus is the Range Viper takes this, but we all know uh, Rakondo's mustache walks away from the fight unscathed and, and, and retreats to another powerful face. It, it survives. Uh, but let's do the chick fight, Turk. Let's do it. Let's close out on a. You don't want Rogue to be in it. <laughs> What's that? I said, no. You don't want Rogue to be in the chick fight. She's oh, going to win as soon as she touches you. Fight. <laughs> um, so she ain't sorry. winning against Range Viper. <laughs> <laughs> she would win against most of them. Just touch them all. I think Rogue would. would okay, have. so yeah, Turkish Murphy, the floor is yours. Who who are the two chicks you want? Sorry, who are the two female Joes and Cobras <laughs> that you? Um, like, you had it right the know. first time. I have uh, some chicks over here. I'll be back. <laughs> but I I don't know if Allison left the chat or whatnot. But I know she don't care about the language. But still, hmm. Baroness versus Shooter, Cobra Crimson Commander suggested. That. Uh, that's a good one. Turkish Murph, you uh, you good with uh, Crimson Cobra? Cr I'm sorry, Crimson Cobra Commander's suggestion. Aaron's digging out a box. Got a box. <laughs> it's a box full of Joes because you guys know I've been doing reviews where I had all my Joes stacked. This, all my Joes are literally in this box. Yeah, man. Okay. Shooter. So, oh, that would drive me absolutely crazy if their accessories are in there too. Uh, they would, are, dude. Dude, my, look, look. My head. They're literally been, like just stacked in there with their. Oh, like, don't show anymore. <laughs> Dude, look away. That's hey, oh, wait. 
I've been resetting on the show. Who's, who wants this box? <laughs> Boxes of Joe's. <laughs> um, so that whoa. Oh, hey. Crow is down for the count. I got to shake it. There we go. It says to shake it. Shake it and send Google feedback. I don't like want a, uh, Hey, salt hey, that, I, I crossed out his thing, but that's actually oh, a box that Church sent me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, me too. That was a good question, though. Who could fix it better? Eh? Um, I don't know if you have got kids, Bob the Builder, but uh, Techno Viper versus uh, Cover Girl. I think Cover Girl Techno Viper would probably fix it, but it wouldn't last. Cover Girl would just be a, a long time and you'd enjoy the view, but it would get fixed. Yeah. Yeah. But and if it's on the battlefield, it's going to be Cover Girl because we determined that the Techno Viper does not go out into battle, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, block on the chain of command. Okay. Uh so I did. I did say Turkish Murphy would name this one, and he said Helix versus a Valkyrie. I think you guys got a Valkyrie. Yeah, I got a Helix right here. All right, let's do. Let's just discuss that one. Right? So I just I don't have a Valkyrie, so I, I I'm man. Right. I, my Valkyrie is all the way in my room. I, there we I, go. I actually need. I'm going to bring them out here because I always get people asking them to see the Valkyries or whatever. Yeah, and, and down south has one with the tan kid up there. There and, we go. Uh, there we nice. go. Down south. Yeah. So the Valkyrie down south. You want to talk us through the the let's let's go through the the long range with Valkyrie because you've got her in your hand and you know what she's got. No, I got her in my hand. All right. Oh yeah. So. So she, she does long range. So she has this uh, AR looking thing that we get with all of the figures. You know, it looks like a, maybe a M4, M16 variation, whatever it is. It looks like it's got possibly the 203, got a grenade launcher on the bottom. It does have a blast effect. So I have actually stuck one in it. So both of these were firing. So it's going to be a good medium to long range weapon that she comes with. Uh, as far as the long range fight for her and I don't have it with her. She also has the, the cartoon SMG that I love so much. That is it's not so much long range, but she does have it. Yeah. I love that cartoon SMG too. I, I did too. I hate it when I saw the pics of it initially, <clears throat> Yeah, but once you see it, it on your finger, it works. It needs to come with every troop builder. I don't care what they are. Give it to the ill ID GAF. Give it to every Cobra troop builder. It's got All a right. World War II Germany appeal to it that I see in it. And I'm just like, I yeah. Like it. yeah. And not to it. get not to get off topic, guys, but I think Hasbro can do a little bit better in the booty department on the female figures. What do you guys think? Yeah, about let's see. What do you yeah. think about that? I mean, all right. Here's a for instance. Okay, we got a little, you know, rear end shot right there. It's a Helix rear needs a goddamn but cheese then, I mean, then then there's just like some badonka donk rear ends where I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, why can't Joe's be like that? <laughs> yeah, well, they couldn't give her a bunch of accessories, so they gave her a great ass. Guys, uh, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit if the you like. like that live yeah. view of Rogue and where this discussion's going, you hit that. Sorry, like. guys. <laughs> No, and it's, sorry guys, it's they were just in front of me. I was looking, and I, I was like, man, you know what? They could have a lot. Just to shape so, it a little bit better, please. You know? don't get stood up, but please don't lose that butt. Somebody's gonna play that hard roll and take butt ain't gold, so they toss it and leave it, and I pull up quick to retrieve it. <laughs> no. that karaoke. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so no, and that's a good point because uh, you know down south. I know, I know you're you're a comic guy. I'm a comic guy, Aaron. I think you've read a few comics, but you like that X Men '97. We talk about Rogue's butt. I don't know about you, DS, but uh, back in the day, I always kind of viewed <laughs> viewed uh, Rogue as like your your Mississippi tra trailer park white girl. You know, and uh, she she would wear the top of the line giant tiger fashion. And go I mean, and that's my kind of girl. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean, that's, that's come on, she was worked she, on that. She was played in the original movies by Sookie Stackhouse. So yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> the, the worst actress ever. 
Um, <laughs> I don't. I never. I wasn't ever a huge. Uh, I didn't read X Men. My brother did, but no. I, I wasn't a big X Men fan. So uh, I can't speak to the X Men lore very much. Uh, oh, most of my X Men anyway, knowledge. I, I'm learning it, man. I'm learning okay. it. Yeah. So um, yeah, Rogue. <laughs> Yeah, Damn, that's Woody. A separate, we could do a video about the X-Men some other time. But, okay, so <laughs> for long range, Helix's ass is not effective. <laughs> no, that's close range. Um, yeah, Helix, okay, close range. Helix is definitely, definitely not a long range. No. She, she is all about the close range. That is for yes. sure. So I think that gives the Valkyrie the, the nice advantage at a long range. Yeah, I think so. But I think at mid range, sorry, I meant to touch myself. I'm going to touch myself. I touch myself. <laughs> think about you. I want to touch you myself. Know. We were all there thinking. It. <laughs> <laughs> when, and now I hold up Helix as I talk about touching myself. No, I um, don't want anybody else. <laughs> there we go. And that's what you guys come for. And that's the extra content monetization on Aaron's channel. Will yeah, there will be I was much more to sing singing. Like Purple Rain or something. I was supposed to sing a Purple Rain song like eight yeah. months ago. Nobody oh, you got to get. Those. I'll have to talk Pop Blender into sing, trying to sing some Prince because it does. <laughs> nail, he can nail some Prince. The toy answer has ended the trivia and we're getting into music nights. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, music that's a good idea, Crow. Here's the thing on the mid range, all right? Taking it back because we are just over two hours and I, I'm going to make this the last fight of the night. Um, we've got to know Helix's character a little bit in around 2004 through video games. And she was an IDW made up character added to the Joe line. So she's not OG. She's a lot like Shadow Tracker and all that. But apparently she's got some uh, instincts and data calculation abilities that I think at mid-range really gives her a high advantage with those pistols. That's where I was going with that. So, Anybody got any mid-range points uh, that would counter that? Mid-range. Let's see. Um, I mean, she's... Dude. I mean... That out. <laughs> she's got these two little freaking Uzis, man. Or, no, yeah. they're... Whatever these they're are. Standard they're long mag, though. Exactly. They're long mag. Yeah, so they're like thirty round mags, right? Wow. Yeah, I mean she's dumping some some bullets, man. It does really yeah, doesn't matter. Mags. Fifty thousand bullets are coming at you. <laughs> yeah, they're supposed to be they're supposed to be fully auto ten millimeters, is what her dual pistols are supposed to be. Okay. Bye, Got a couple of guys to note. Good buddy. night, guys. Thanks very much for joining us tonight. Thank Warcraft. you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you for coming. Go on there. It's all right. What were you saying there, uh, down south? But the max. Oh, just yeah. Her her um, pistols are supposed to be fully auto, ten millimeter, with extended mags. You know, whatever they look like. You know, probably twenty eight, thirty, thirty two round mags. So she's got a lot of bullets, but ten millimeter does have a pretty good punch too. But if she has that uh, that ability, you know, she's she's on the, the spectrum and able to calculate things quickly. Maybe that helps her control the recoil because if you look at those pistols, they're going to have a shitload of recoil as short as they are. So the the, the barrel, so Hudson oh. guns. Pistols, yeah, no, that's a fair point. And um, so. yeah, so the, the 10 millimeter, the punch of the hole, and it's not like we're talking about Angela Angelina Jolie in the the movie Wanted here, where she's like curving bullets through windows and across. Oh yeah, the, right. Like yeah. she has an advantage with ballistic calculations, but it's not like yeah. Spider Man level sensory shit, right? My understanding. Yeah, right? it's 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 real. It's supposed to you know realistic as that can be, enhanced by her gear. Um, you know, that she's got you know, on her wrist thing and all that. So, uh, you know, she's going to be as close as you can probably get within the realm of believability in G.I. Joe to something like, you know, like that or like, like Matrix, something like that. She yeah. heightened, highly heightened senses. She, you know, she dropped some acid for she, 
went into battle. <laughs> she could overanalyze the situation and find the best yeah. protocol for it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. She's like a she's like a combat rain man, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like yeah. Different- I like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rain woman. There you go. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'd say she definitely has the advantage of that. And then if we if we take into consideration, I mean, like let's down step. You got to hold up the Valkyrie again, uh, because this is where I think her story just kind of comes to a, a an end, right? Because when we talk about Cobra Troopers in general, these are the lower denominator. I think we said that there's a hierarchy, but. Troopers are near the bottom, right? And where are they resourced from? But mercenaries and gangs and what else? Like, I'm trying to remember where all Cobra Troopers were recruited from. All of the the cast-offs of society that are fed up with the system, the, you know, caste system, and uh, just anybody that's disenfranchised from anywhere. Right. So we're talking about a bunch of keyboard warriors with guns. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm joking. Well, ex, I mean, like, you know, ex disenfranchised uh, military or you know whatever. So oh, maybe took anybody. I mean, well, mm-hmm. well, hell, they got <laughs> They must have a hell of a health plan for the ones that survive. <laughs> they care. We know they care about safety. They have seat belts. I'd be in it just for the uniform. <laughs> yeah. I'd, be, I'd be in it for them. I'd be questioning <laughs> that health plan that they have. You know, like if I was a Cobra Trooper right now, I'd be very nervous every time a new bat came off the assembly line. <laughs> oh shit! I'd be like, how much of a job am I gonna have? Right? Yeah, you, you <laughs> didn't you didn't upgrade the AI in that one too much, did you? <laughs> yeah. No, I think. Uh, does anybody disagree that I think if we were to jump to the end of it, uh, I would think that the story is really just about Helix beating up infantry at this point. And infantry, while they've got great loadouts to balance them, I think she's like another Snake Eyes Storm Shadow type, is she not? Yes. Does that not instantly preclude her to win when she's she's got two? Not like Ricondo had one. She got two of these damn Gukari high tech fiber knives, and then these mm-hmm. dragon pincer blades and katanas. I think that's a done deal. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I. Close range, I can't argue that point. Uh, much as I love the Valkyries, and I really am pretty indifferent about Helix, and I may be probably the only person on the damn planet, but uh, yeah, she's gonna, she's chopping them into sushi at close range between her, um, her analytical ability and the Mantis blades, the two Gurkhas, and you know her hands. Yeah, she has, she's also trained in in martial arts. She's trained in about everything. So you know, I could imagine her just slicing through bullets, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. or like Deadpool just <laughs> missing all of them and dying, right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I I agree there, Del uh, Del South. Like, um, if you ask me, if this is an amazing looking figure and it's got a lot of appeal sensory play all that i'd say yes but the depth of the character itself i find just it's another shelf mi6 super agent and yeah i uh, yeah i see um because i wasn't i wasn't reading idw when she was introduced and i didn't play that mid game and her backstory and everything to me sounds like what you said like it sounds like Angelina Jolie wanted let's make an awesome empowered female character that is not quite snake eyes, but snake eyes in a different plane. And I got no problem with that, that character with having a a badass female character. I love the female characters. I just think she is. So she's a trope. She she's a trope. What about that face sculpt though, guys? And I love the face and the hair. Oh Yeah. And she's got that she, she's got that rogue uh trashy trailer park um you know, southern yeah, yeah she's <laughs> when she gets off work she is definitely going to dance on a pole oh yeah, yeah. she got that little dangly hair <laughs> <laughs> um loki war two says she has plate armor guys um yeah she is well i mean like you can see the, the chest and the belly 
Yeah, well, they have. They've got the same damn torso. So, but I mean, if it's them. dragon scale plating, I mean, it's not the it's not the highest effectiveness. It's 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 just there for luck more than than power, right? But Turkish Murphy thinks the Valkyrie wins. And now I saw the comment about an M203 grenade getting fired off early, and yeah, they don't detonate if you fire them off. Uh, too too short and uh, i watched right. the guy do one into the ground by accident at a range once and Ooh. i was like, oh my god what just happened and it got explained to me but yeah it's uh i so do you bounce? think the valkyrie wins uh, i don't think so i don't know ah <laughs> uh, she's saying oh that oh god oh yeah uh so yeah overall guys that was it i just wanted to kill the time with a couple of the guys uh, the backyard battlefield tonight uh, we talked about the waves before. I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of new Joe news. Am I uh, stuck then, on full screen? <laughs> what's that? You're still on yeah. full screen, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Aaron, so, well, you, you talk talked about the... Everybody's watching me think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You talked about the, the tiger paw and wreckage that broke earlier. That's really about it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Y'all excited for that? I gotta check it out, man. I just you guys broke the news. On it. it just happened, like you know, like six o'clock, six. Oh, o'clock. oh yeah, I, I was getting my butt beat by three brown belts at the around uh, somewhere around that time. But it's so, uh, <laughs> yeah, they uh at, at like I don't know six thirty or so. I mean, full force was on where he was just talking about it, so you know it just broke. If he's still yeah. live talking about it, so. Yeah. The, um, uh, the, I, the thing about the tiger paw that kind of shocked me was that it, instead of seeing lifeline frostbite or um, even sky striker for whatever reason from that first wave of uh, tiger force they kind of did what they did with uh, outback and they jumped to that past 94 uh that resource pool and they pulled well, wreckage, right well wreckage wreckage is a, apparently a figure that a whole lot of people have been wanting for, wanting them to make in that um helix shadow tracker type realm yes. uh i didn't know i had no idea who wreckage was until yeah. shark eyes had had told me who wreckage was and of course he was part of that toys r us like 2008 tiger force pack and the figure itself was a homage to an unreleased tiger force figure that was going to be made. I didn't know all of that. This is what he told me a few months ago. He's really been after a wreckage figure. So there are a lot of people that want it at the same time. I can see those same people kind of pissed off because they've got to buy a vehicle to get him. Yeah. And he's yeah. not an army builder. He's a named character. Uh, I think he looks cool. I've got no interest in the tiger paw. I wouldn't mind getting a wreckage, but again, it, you know, I might as well buy the damn thing by the time I buy a loose wreckage figure, but I'm not super excited for it because I don't need all the Tiger Force personally. But I know Aaron they, loves them, but they did it with Clutch, they did it with a, a Breaker, you know. Well, Clutch makes sense, <laughs> yeah. they Breaker did really did not. If anybody should have been paywalled behind the damn ram, it should have been rock and roll. Well, I'm as, glad he wasn't, but, uh, but the clutch thing, makes sense for the vamp. If you looked at the old box of the Ram when it first came out in the 80s, it was Breaker riding it, right? And that made sense. Yeah. To me. And uh, when we get into the Tiger Paw, I mean, I'll say their names because I'm not one of the guys that really gives a shit about this, but Viper Island, they had a good theory that it should be probably a lifeline. If you're going to bet on someone, bet on a lifeline. Yeah, because he was on the box art, right? Right, it would be the, the it would be a good one, um, That's right. but you're right. To, to, there seems to be no rhyme or reason, but also Lifeline is on the box of the Tiger Paw from the '80s, so you, that yeah. logic stood up. Now it's just it's like a crapshoot, right? So it's like whoever you get. Well, on one hand, I can see people that want wreckage kind of being pissed off about it, but those same people are probably going to buy all the Tiger for us anyway because yeah. of that so they're probably just can't wait for the tiger paul and then you've got like me like i i don't really need it but the thing that ticks me off about it is we hadn't even got the ferret yet it just went up for pre-order 
and they're already leaking repaints of it, let us at least get it in our hands before you start showing me how you're going to wring money out of the next version of it. You know, this, I agree with that too. And, and that, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead, Aaron. Sorry. No, no, I, I totally agree. And um, that can also lead to, uh, um, well, that can lead to people canceling orders sometimes too, when there's two vehicles out that are the same, because some people might favor one over the other. And that's yeah. what I, surprised me about this. I thought for sure Hasbro <laughs> would have left their Barrett and Scout driver on the market for a good hot minute before they gave us a choice, right? And now yeah. we have a choice. So am I going to buy that? ferret at $75 Canadian or 75 like it's around 75 to 80 Canadian by the time we're done uh I know your pricing is different but uh or am I gonna prioritize one over the other I'm absolutely prioritizing one over the other the other part is how much shelf space do we have to play with here guys you want to have another vehicle for Tiger Force are you holding out for a snowcat or a vamp or maybe this little ferret is what your shelf can accommodate i don't know right well let's uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to do some i'll have to do some big time rearranging with the tiger paul also for people like me that i'm not really that into tiger force now i mean i've got all of them up till now but i'm probably not going to keep getting them just because it's not my thing i'll probably buy python patrol because i like them but people like me that don't really care that much for Tiger Force and have no idea who the hell wreckage was till somebody yep. explained it to me. Like that's an easy pass for them, but the people that want it really want it. Yeah. And that's the one thing I've learned over this last year of doing YouTube. Half my <laughs> subscriber base are guys that collected well after I got out. And what makes me hot under the collar about the characters I get excited about they're like, what did you ever see in that guy? This guy's amazing. And I'm like, that's Ice Cream Soldier. What the frick? You know, like, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. With records, it just, I don't know. I don't know who asked for it, but I hope somebody appreciates it. I just know I don't want any, I, I, I'm waiting for the videos that, where nobody has picked this thing up in their hand and I hear the words, clearance only. And then I'd be like, <laughs> Well, it's a Target, so it's going to be a Target exclusive. And Tiger Force <laughs> is here for us. Yeah. So even, even if you pass on it initially, the way Target runs sales, like you're, you'll be able to get your hands on it at least a little bit discounted. Like that, that last big one that they did, not this past one because there were no good toys on it, but the one before that, I bought an, a second Python Trouble Bubble. I was about to say that the Python. I, yeah. So it was, um, you know, yeah. I wanted another one and I really didn't want to lay the money down. And I even had a regular one I was going to trade somebody for, but nobody had an extra at the time. So when they put that sell up, I was like, hell yeah, I can grab me a second bubble. And it was, I think it was like $34.99 or $36.99. So even if they don't hit the clearance, Target always does those kick ass sales. See, Target. Our equivalent is Toys R Us. Uh, right now, I just spotted a Tiger Force Trouble Bubble. I almost bought it there last time because it's like in the $75 Canadian. I got a 10% military vet discount. I was like, I could do it. But it's it's Python Patrol, and I don't want Python Patrol for much, right? Like, I, it's just not my thing. I'm the opposite. I yep. would buy more Tiger Force. But, I mean... If I bought the trouble bubble, I'll trade anybody for the normal trouble bubble, the Tiger Force one, if that ever comes down to it. But uh, yeah. Um, any closing thoughts to make, guys? I kind of want to end this on beat. I got to go have a smoke and a piss and a joint. <laughs> the chat's filtering out. I think we're done. Well, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. Yeah. And, uh, yep. I did. I did have a second thing, but I'm. I'm. I'm ready to go eat and stuff and uh yeah um, yeah we gotta do it again sometime like i i could i could do the battle rama again and i do have a couple other things that we can do next time yeah, oh, yeah for sure the three of us have hashed this one out if we ever want to revisit it i think we'll play to our to, you know you between the three of us we, i love that arena i think uh that was awesome that three star just happened to have that built before we did this. so thanks <laughs> yes. very much 
go out again. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, somebody's gonna That's have awesome. to kill Grumpy Bear. Um, but- <laughs> Nobody's gonna dethrone Grumpy Bear. <laughs> Grumpy Bear wins all. <laughs> Unless I put him in there with like Red Death from Figure Obscura and nothing. Nobody's taking out Grumpy Bear. <laughs> Cobra Command, Crimson Cobra Commander. Of course, we don't mind if you ever see anything that we do oh. here in, uh, on yeah. the battlefield backyard battlefields, and it inspires you to do anything. You just do it, buddy. We'll cheer you. Run on. it. Yeah, yeah, that goes for anybody. Run it, man. Yep. yep. Oh man. So I'll watch it. <laughs> yep. Send it. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, yeah. Uh. I have no closing thoughts tonight, but Aaron. Uh. Or sorry. Um. Uh, down south, did you have anything? Because if not, I'm going to hand this over to Aaron to close it out tonight because I know you got to get ready for your chat tomorrow night. But Aaron, you always have a good charity you're supporting or something great to add lib on. We could close it with uh, either one of you tonight. Down no. south, did you have anything? Nope, not really. Just going to be trying to get some reviews out and I'll be on Thursday with a friend, Punk with Toys, tomorrow if everybody wants to tune into that. And I uh, hope everybody has a good night and a good weekend. And thanks for coming to listen to us do this. Yeah. Go ahead, Aaron. Yes. Thank you guys for joining the back. Oh, we just lost your sound, Aaron. Oh, oh. did I lose my sound? Yeah, no, it's back it. now. Yeah. Okay. Real quick, guys. Um, um, Don't forget about uh, canines, canine for warriors. Please go check it out. Donate. You're not only saving a, a, a veteran, but you're you're saving a dog's life to go help um, someone who's who's dedicated their life to the country, to our freedom. Um, it, it's it's killing two birds with one stone. I, I feel so so definitely definitely give a little donation to the canines for warriors. Right on. All right. And with that, guys, I'm going to say thanks very much, everybody that showed up in the chat. Uh, we're not sure when we're going to do this again, but just realize it's always on the, it's always in the air, and it's just a matter of throwing lawn darts and seeing when three land in the same circle, right? So, um, yeah, you guys, don't forget to check out Cobra Crimson Commander, his new channel, same time toys. That's uh, that's another friend of ours. We're familiar. Check all that out. Do check out uh, Punk with Toys tomorrow night. Who am I kidding? You guys, will, I'll see you there. You guys have a great tomorrow night, guys. Yep. Peace out. Yep. Yes. All right.